This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the show. You may take control of the airwaves. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in our studio tonight. It's Ian, Derek J, and Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop on into freetalklive.com. Get interactive there. There's a lot in the news to talk about tonight. And actually, the front page of the website is one of the places we go to to get our sources, you know, the stories that we're talking about here on Free Talk Live. And you are the ones who provide the, the content there on the front page. If it weren't for listeners like you, we wouldn't have much of interest on the front page because it's all been created by listeners like you. So go over there, get uh, creative and vote on the stuff that's already there or add items to the front page of our website at freetalklive.com. Uh, we're going to start tonight by talking about, I, I don't know if it's corporal punishment, is it? Would that be no, what we're, we're talking no about it's here? not corporal punishment. It's about peaceful parenting. We're, we're, we're talking about yelling at, yelling kids, right? at not, kids, not hitting them now, because we've certainly talked about hitting children, and I consider spanking to be hitting. I know that there are a lot of people that will disagree with that statement, but I, I think it's one and the same. Well, um, legal experts in Europe would disagree. They, okay. they would say that it is hitting. It's, That's what I it's said. Banned I, in, yeah, well, but it's banned in most countries. Uh, in Europe, yes. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize it was banned. That sounds um, like a good album. Banned in Europe. <laughs> I consi- I do consider uh, spanking to be hitting. Yes, uh, and I, that's what I think is a lot of people disagree with that in the United States because they were raised with spanking and so they believed that well, I turned out fine, mm. and maybe it would have turned out better if you hadn't been spanked. It's tough to really say those things though, and uh, everybody's got their own personal. It's really story. impossible to say those things. But, I mean, but what about uh, verbal abuse? That's the story that you've got tonight, Derek J. Yeah, the headline is yelling at kids could be just as harmful as physical discipline, the study suggests. Uh, This from the Huffington Post. And like Mark pointed out, there's no way we can know because we can't compare the same kids uh, to what they would have experienced otherwise. We have no uh, alternate universe to do these tests in. Or we can't even do double blind studies. Um, You know, you can't take it would be. I guess it would just sort of be the wrong thing to do to uh, do, you know, well, you're going to be the non-spanking group and you're going to be the spanking group. And then we're going to see yeah. how the kids turn out. Because the fact is, is that when you look at spanking, that would be unethical. The, the non-spanking advocates will constantly point at a couple of uh, studies out there that say things like, um, for instance, kids who were spanked have lower IQs. Well, there's a problem with that because the parents that, Uh, voluntarily opt not to spank could be potentially people who are, you know, genetically predisposed to have children with higher IQs. I mean, I don't know, but it's it's kind of an experiment in parenting to choose not to spank right right now in the United States. Would you agree with that statement? I suppose. I don't know if it's a a new experiment. It's been going on for decades. But uh, you would still probably be in the mi- you're you're in the minority. And- if you don't spank, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and- but it's been the trend for hundreds of years to uh, use less and less violence in parenting. Agreed. A hundred percent agreed. Um, I would agree with you that somebody who spanks with a hand today is a uh, you know. Frankly, um, you know, far less violent than perhaps somebody who, you know, was, uh, you know, used a switch a hundred years ago, or the the Bible says a rod. Mm-hmm. I always think it's interesting what you know the Bible, you know, people hearken back to the Bible about spare the rod and spoil the child. Well, you know, you did just say the word rod, so when you choose not to use a rod, your hand spanked or wooden spoon spanked child may or may not be spoiled according to this holy book of yours. So I, hmm. I don't think that's a particularly good reason. And I just wanted to use good reasons when I, when I look at this stuff. And I, um, when, when, when the non-spankers will say things, and I, we, we don't spank my son, but we're doing it as an experiment. We're not doing it because we're smug and we know everything. Um, when non-spankers say it takes IQ points, I've always disagreed with that because I think it's obviously not true. Well, I think that's that's a tough thing to prove, right? IQ is a weird thing in the first place. There's different kinds of intelligence out there. Uh, there's like math smarts kind of intelligence. Yes, but there's, there's still IQ. Smarts there's still an IQ test. I want to know more about what you mean by you're doing it as an experiment. Aren't you just doing it because you think it's right? I don't know that I think it's necessarily right. No, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to spank a child. I think it's wrong to spank a child because I think that what it does do is it teaches children silently 
that violence solves problems. And that, that might and Dick's right. The yeah. bigger people are always right because well, they can hurt you. And that mommy and daddy uh, believe that violence solves problems, and they prove that by spanking you when you do something wrong, which communicates that message that this is how you solve problems in the future. And you don't have to have some sort of IQ test to prove that that's absolutely, I think, what is transmitted by the use of violence when it comes to raising children. But you're just communicating the same thing when you take things away as punishment. You're saying, look... I can take things away from you. Rich people can tell poor people what to do because we've got the stuff. When you say that, uh, when you, when you, um, I wouldn't say that's the same thing at all. I mean, t taking a privilege, taking a video game system or something right. like that so with the to equivalent uh, to to make that sound uh, like it's violence or at the same level of violence, I think is uh, really intellectually dishonest. I don't think it is at all. Um, and having been and, and the only person in the room with a child, um, you know, that always gets pulled out on mm -hmm. and you folks that have advice on parenting that aren't parents and we do appreciate all of the coaching and everything but at the end of the day we're the ones choosing to do it um you know people have used uh, will use pain to teach things over time now can it be misused yes absolutely 100 percent. i think that you know let's use this as a starting point if you spank more than one time per year you need to look at what you're doing and why you're doing it but that's my, uh, you know, yardstick on this one. I don't appreciate being told that I can't give input on I didn't how say people that. raise their parents. I or, said or I how appreciate they your kids. input. Didn't well, I? yeah, but it was a bit tongue in cheek. Yeah, it is tongue in cheek. Yeah, be because who cares? Well, you're the one with biological prisoners. <laughs> I didn't. I don't have any biological prisoners. So, you know, maybe I I have uh, some input on it, but I'm not the one doing the the business. So anyway, this is what Mandy Velez says at the Huffington Post. She makes an interesting case. She says sticks and stones indeed break bones, but words can cause real harm to kids too a new study says and bullies in the schoolyard aren't the only ones to blame harsh verbal discipline on the part of a parent increases a child's risk for depression and aggressive behavior and is not uncommon according to the research which was published online earlier this week in child development the disciplinary techniques in question include yelling cursing Name calling. And humiliation. Yep. You stupid little brat. Yeah. The well, example given is calling the child dumb, lazy, or something similar. So um, one has to be careful with this, too. R remember that when you just lay out a bunch of prohibitions, like don't spank, don't cuss, don't uh, say names, uh, you know, th these things, you're not really giving coaching in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Like you need to say, this is what you should do. Mm. This is how you should do it. And, uh, you know, for instance, there was this uh, show called the, the Nanny, the British Nanny or something like that. This woman yeah. that would go into people's homes, um, give advice on, you know, how to better manage their homes and that kind of thing. Most of it was child care. And she told, you know, she told people how to use timeouts. Um, you know, what under what circumstances to use timeouts and just a variety of things showed dis disciplinary techniques. And at the very least, whether you like timeouts or not, yeah, I think they're horrible. Right. I understand it's using force. Well, you're going to have to use force when you have kids <laughs> or you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll lend you one for a couple I've of days. I've seen it done another way. <laughs> you know, just as a brief aside, when I was with a child at a restaurant and, you know, I was inviting this couple out to a restaurant, they brought their child with them, and he was he was intent on eating at the window. He got climbed up, up onto the window of this restaurant. That's where he was going to eat. And yep. I had a problem with this, and I tried to pick him up. And his dad stopped me and said, whoa, whoa, whoa boys, don't wrestle. And then explained, you know, hey, if, if you're going to eat there, then we're going to have to bring you your plate there. And that's where you're going to have to be for the, the entire time if that's where you want to eat. Or you can sit next to me. And he gave the child an opportunity to reason through it. This boy was about five years old. And he decided he wanted to sit next to dad instead of sitting at the window. I felt so embarrassed that I put my hands on another person's child. That was the wrong thing to do, but that's what I was taught. Hmm. Yeah, and I understand picking up, you know, ultimately, you know, when, when being, when parenting, some of the times you got to pick a kid up. You got to move him from one place to another. You know, Like when your son's running toward traffic and is, you know, What if you're late for an old. appointment? Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More about using verbal violence, if we could call it that. It's Free Talk Live. 
One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Attention, have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys. Attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800 648 9173. 800 648 9173. 800 648 9173. That's 800 648 9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want by dialing toll-free. Comment on the spanking issue, which is also now a larger issue. It's not just spanking anymore that could possibly damage your children. It could also be yelling at them. And uh, Derek J. has some more information about that from the Huffington Post. We're going to continue with that story here in moments. We'd love to get your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Or you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You know, there are a lot of reasons why someone like you might want a second passport or to renounce your citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people renouncing citizenship in the U.S., 
but it is done all over the world, whether it's governmental intrusion on privacy or protest against foreign policy, to protect your wealth, avoid pointless regulations, onerous taxation, or as a refuge, you may want to get a second passport or to change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at PassportsForBitcoin.com, which they take Bitcoin. It's yet another way that Bitcoins can offer you more freedom at PassportsForBitcoin.com. Uh, Derek J., you've got a story from the Huffington Post saying there's a new study out that says that uh, maybe yelling at your children is damaging. Tell me more. Yep, yelling, cursing, and humiliation. The study even suggests that verbal reprimands can have the same impact on children as physical punishment. Wow. The negative, uh, this from the study, quote, the negative effects of verbal discipline within the two-year period of the study were comparable to the effects shown over the same period of time in other studies that focused on physical discipline. The, that from the University of Pittsburgh, where the study's lead author is an assistant professor. So I wonder if he has some sort of uh, angle at stake here. This makes sense to me. I mean, for parents to yell insults at their children, to me, communicates that they don't actually love them. And I'm sure that communicates uh, really clearly to the kids and they don't well, feel appreciated. I don't think that's true. I think that people have gotten twisted looks at what love is. And we um, we have very selfish views of what love is. But um, agreed, it's not, it's not good. It's not love expressed in a good way. Um, I think that I have had this basically this contention all along, and that's why I disagree with the anti-spanking crowd on the spanking issue because, uh, you know, they'll often say things like spanking lowers a child's IQ. They'll point to some studies out there that do that, and I think that that's ludicrous. However, let's say for a second that the way a child is treated um, in their childhood, especially in the area of discipline, can affect their intelligence. I think that's a fair thing to say. Fine. Let's go for it. Do you think it's the physical striking of the child upon their bottom that does it? No. Is it their backside, just the back hemisphere of their body that causes their IQ to be lowered? No. Because you could slap them on the face and lower their IQ too if, if discipline was what does it. It's the communication that the person that you love the most in the world you know, may hate you, intends to terrify you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this is what it's all about. And this can be done without force or violence. And this is why I hate the spanking conversation, because the spanking conversation is not a conversation about hitting children on the butt. It is a conversation about how you treat people in your family generally. Now, I also don't like the term that this uh, this article uses with yelling. What do they mean by yelling? Am I yelling talking now? really loud? Am I yelling now? Yeah, right? if you're if you're you know causing distress to the the young person in your world, okay, you know well, your biological prisoner, as I, I as I call them. I, I, you know, I mean, I I remember I went into a restaurant one time when I was little and saw a man with one eye. That caused me distress. It's not his fault though. It's your well, parents' it's fault for bringing you there. Wait, it's the content of the yelling, right? I mean, if right, you're it's the content of the yelling. You go back to the thing with Jack, uh, your son, Mark. He's now six. Is he six now? Uh, yes, he's six okay. years old. Uh, so you go back to, I know, remember you told me once upon a time he had gone down the driveway and you oh, live near a state road. It's a busy place. Um, and so, you know, you didn't want him to run out into the road. He was three or something, Some you know, on a fairly young, number, yeah. fairly young side. Not not the best brain workings going on there at it that didn't age. didn't understand it, just interesting. But it wouldn't be abusive to say, to yell, Jack, stop, right? Yeah. That's an appropriate oh, time. I think we can to, all agree that to yell. <laughs> That's but right. I did, and he didn't. <laughs> but then, if you start, if you were to say Jack, stop, and he didn't, then to, to you know to continue yelling, you stupid little brat. That's when you cross the line See, that, into. That's not yelling. That's name calling. Well, right? If you're ye whether you're yelling it or not. Right. I think. So that's the point. That's what I don't like about this article because I'm not sure what yelling means. Hmm. Do yelling. We I talk think loud in my house. At times we talk loud. You know. I think usually when you're yelling, you aren't listening either. Because typically when you're yelling, you're trying to raise your voice above someone else's. And so kind of by default, you're not actually having a conversation. You're just speaking loudly. Listening to what? Drowning someone out. What Listening if you yell, to the other person. What if you yell in response to not being listened to? Yeah, I think you need to check your emotions in that case. Well, you know, I don't. I, the, the, Whoever's they, yelling is losing, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's that is a personal claim that you have made many times on this uh, show with nary a bit of evidence. It is Ian's opinion, <laughs> leveled as though it is. Fact. All I know is when my mom yelled at me as a uh, as a teenager, 
I felt like she was losing whatever the argument was. You are mm-hmm. on the she was very, losing her cool. You are on the very end of the bell curve for rebellious behavior. And <laughs> I don't know. What that does that mean? You are You're a the rebellious, rebellious individual. You will... I was actually a pretty good kid, I have you know. Most, oh, I of the things <laughs> I did, most of the things I did, they didn't know about. I wouldn't claim that you were a pretty good kid, but I would tell you today that you are an anti-disestablishmentarian. <laughs> uh, that a person can get you to do something simply by telling you not to do it. Well, the study followed about 1,000 Pennsylvania kids aged 13 and 14 and their parents for the 7th and 8th grade years. And it found that the depression or poor behavior increased in the children who were exposed to harsh verbal discipline. I would like to see the the study done on... uh, public school kids, private school kids, and homeschool kids. Mm. I want to know the depression yeah. level on that. Yeah, that would be interesting. More studies. I, I think we need to know more about this topic. I'll bet you that there's a much larger uh, percentage of uh, disparity in that circumstance. But you're not defending yelling at uh, at your kids. I don't know what yelling means, okay. Ian. Yeah. I don't know how better to explain it to you. Yelling, I th- I does yelling mean raising your voice? I would say yes. Okay. Yes, it does. You are defining yelling as this article may or may not wish you to define yelling. I do not know what they mean when they say yelling in this article. Well, hopefully we can get a clear definition of that. But uh, instead of serving to remedy the issue, Mandy writes, verbal discipline tactics seem to provoke the unwanted behavior. Quote, Mm. adolescence is a very sensitive period when kids are trying to develop their self-identities, study leader Ming Te Wang told the Wall Street Journal. When you yell, it hurts their self-image. It makes them feel they are not capable that they are worthless and are useless. Wang added to NPR that the study was a reminder to parents that we need to stay calm, going on to recommend two-way interventions for parents and kids. What is a two-way intervention? I don't know. That's a great question. We'll, it sounds find, like, we'll find that out. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Neil Bernstein, author of How to Keep Your Teenager Out of Trouble and What to Do If You Can't, agreed with the study's implications. He told USA Today, arguing, quote, Extremes of parenting don't work. The put-down parent is no more effective than the laissez-faire parent who's totally chill and sets no limits on their children's behavior. The study authors explored more than the effects of harshness alone. So I'd like to address this. Yes. This is interesting. So um, here in this in this study, they, um, they say that A, don't spank, B, don't yell, um, be supportive in your child, and don't be a hands-off parent. Well, that's I can not tell the you, study. That's Neil Bernstein. He's well, just some author. Fine. I can tell you that what you're doing is you're asking a lot of people that have the only qualification of being able to ejaculate to be good parents, and that is not a good qualification. We're coming back with more of your thoughts. Welcome. Free Talk Live. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of HB extract. It's extremely effective and it starts working in just days. Visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers. And we've never increased our price in over 10 years. That makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc. 
as in Creative Commons. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want by dialing toll-free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Talking about disciplining children today, not just spanking, which has been a long-time topic on Free Talk Live, but now just verbal. Uh, how How to approach a child verbally and not come off as a hate-filled parent who is going to somehow ruin the child uh, for the future through verbal uh, verbal abuse. We'll continue here, and if you are a parent and or were parented and you'd like to comment on this, we'd love to hear from you with your perspective at 855-450-FREE. If you are a parent or have been one or have been parented at any time, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I'm, unlike you, Mark, I think anybody has the right to comment oh, I do. on this particular I topic you, because everybody was parented, likely, unless you were left out in the cold or you know, something I, like I that. Just, but, I, I have the advantage of having been in both positions, yeah. having a big mouth. Prior to having a child and having a big mouth Mm -hmm. after having a child. And I can tell you that I have learned a few things upon having a child. And sometimes the advice of people that don't have children rings somewhat shallow to me. I wouldn't give you advice, but I can talk about my own personal experiences. Like when the one time my mom slapped me across the face... I'll, I'll remember that for a long time, but I don't remember what it was about. So the you know whatever it was that she was trying to communicate to me, it didn't stick with me today. All I just remember was her hitting me. So yeah, I They're, think it's com- I think it's completely reasonable to ask people what their experiences were like, whether or not they have children. What was it like when you were growing up? What about you, Derek J? What what was it like when you were growing up? How were your parents? Oh man, well, um, a good story that uh, before I came along, my brothers and sisters are a little older than me, so my parents mm-hmm. had some experience, and one of those experiences was um, spanking my older sister, and she was very young, maybe like five. And she cried and cried for hours. My dad tells this story. Um, She went up to her room and was crying on her bed. And he went to the door and said, Mandy, I didn't hit you that hard. What's wrong? Mm. And she said, you hurt my feelings. Yeah. 
he never spanked again. Wow. And it was because he, I mean, he could see what he had done wrong. Absolutely. And uh, I am grateful for that. And I'm grateful that uh, my older sister was able to articulate her feelings at such a young age. And I would contend that uh, spanking, you know, through the studies, the studies that I've looked at, spanking is no more particularly effective than other forms of discipline with a child. Um, but that spanking has potential backlashes mm -hmm. and that you know these are the these are the sort of things i mean um that we're talking about here just just what you're referring to now jack had an issue one time with being put in time out he kept on going over to a construction site where things were falling off the roof things that would uh -oh. cleave his little body in half but he really 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 wanted to show the people on the top of the construction site his tricycle Aww. and i kept telling him over and over again don't go into this particular area, but he really, really wanted to go over there. And I told him, because he'd sneak over there when I wasn't looking. Oh, and I told him, if you go back over there, you're going into timeout. And he's, uh, you know, he did it again. And once you say you've, you're going to do something, yeah. you got to do it. So then I take his t tricycle. It's made of plastic, by the way. So I pick it up. I toss it over to the side. I you pick, threw it? I did pick it. I, I wanted it. I didn't want it to get crushed by the next thing that fell off the roof. Oh, I see. It just <laughs> sounded like you were out of control, you nope. know, like just I, throwing his stuff. I picked him up and I took him to his room and I sat him down. I explained why he was in um, going into timeout. I told him how long it would be. It is one minute for every year of his age. And I think that would have made him four at the time. Um, four minutes. And... Then at the end, I you know I sit out there. I'm in timeout too. I just got to sit there and do something for four <laughs> minutes because you, if you go do something, it's going to be longer than four minutes, and you can't just come back and say, "Ha, huh, it was four minutes." Mm -hmm. There's a clock right in his room. We're trying to teach him how to tell time, you know. So mm -hmm. I mean, he knows how long four minutes is. <laughs> so I've got to sit there for four minutes, thumbing my, uh, drumming my fingers, waiting for four <laughs> minutes to come up. And then I go back in and I explain to him why it was he was in timeout and how much I love him and how I wish he wouldn't do it again. See, but I think that's weird. Uh, the parents who are like, I love you now after they've punished the child, yep. like that just rings insincere to me. I know you are sincere, but it's just like, I've, I've hurt really you. I really sincerely and now, do not want his tiny little body cleaved in half and I don't care whether or not he likes it. I don't <laughs> think that's insincere. I think that, uh, you know, I think that's the right thing to do after you, well, and I don't mean after physical abuse. I mean like after... You know, stopping him from running out in the street. That's it's a t entirely appropriate to sit sit him down and say, "Look, you know, I love you, and that's why I did this. You w you could have gotten, you probably would have gotten hurt had I, you know, not grabbed you. I'm sorry for grabbing you like that. I didn't mean to scare you. I don't think there's anything uh, that's disingenuous about that. But I do think it's disingenuous for someone to spank." Or beat or tell a child that you know they're stupid and then go and say they love. What them. do they I think always that's say? It's very for, contradictory. It's for your own good. Yeah. yeah. Well, but Ian, you have this fixation. I'm only spanking you because I love you. you Whoa, have this, crazy! You have this fixation on spanking, and spanking is a form of punishment. I think it is an outdated one that largely can be, uh, you know, taken care of with other situations. But what if Jack? had done it again. Wait, out, outdated? What technology replaced spanking? Uh, timeouts are a great technology that's replaced spanking. Um, technology is just I'm ideas. I'm not so sure. Hold that thought. Thinking. Uh, speaking of technology, I want to let you know about Modafinil from modup.net. If you need focus or feeling fatigued, you want to get that extra edge when it counts, go check out Modafinil. Modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about Modafinil from Modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work, giving them the critical edge that they need. And over at Modup.net, they provide only the highest premium Modafinil with the highest potency, so you enjoy significant results. It's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Now remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. And when you pay with Bitcoin at modup.net, you'll get a 33% discount. So talk about a significant incentive to pay with Bitcoin. Make the deal even better. Use our code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So don't forget code FTL at modup.net. It's world, uh, world class service at a great price. And don't forget code FTL to get the 10 free tablets at modup, M O D U P dot net. As we go to Justin in Pittsburgh, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, J, and Mark. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Justin, you're on the air. Go ahead. 
I uh, just wanted to make a couple of quick comments. Um, first, I tend to agree with Ian on the subject of uh, spanking overall. Um, my biggest reason for it, uh, I always kind of try to use this quote as an example that fear is a poor motivator because when you take the object of fear away, you also remove the motivation. Um, my personal experience, I, I was spanked as a kid and I knew, you know, when my parents were around, there were things that I would do that would get me spanked, but as soon as they weren't around anymore, it didn't matter. As long as they didn't find out about it, I didn't get in trouble. So it, it kind of, but that's, I, I feel like that's a poor experiment. A like while. you've drawn conclusions from a bad experiment because you, you can't, you have not had a childhood where you didn't get spanked. So you don't know how you would have acted when your parents were around. You would agree that your parents had to limit your behavior in some way, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there were things I was doing that probably were not for my own good, so I, I understand right. the need for some sort. So of there's some discipline, and you likely would have behaved differently when your parents weren't around. So who knows how you would have behaved had you not been spanked? And this is I, this is one of the difficulties of sort of looking at spanking as a deterrent and not as a deterrent, because I can tell you as a parent, there is highly unacceptable behavior that children um, will uh, in, in participate in. They tend to not act rationally. Many people who don't have kids think you can just talk to them out of uh, talk them out of whatever it is that they're they're doing. And I tend to think you can't. Um, sometimes you just got to say, nope, not going to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I do kind of agree with you on that. I mean, you've pointed it out a couple of times, Mark. You can't really reason with a toddler. It doesn't matter if you explain it to him a lot of times. You just don't have the ability to understand. But I also, you know, it's just like I said, I, the only thing I can go on is personal experience. Sure. I've never been a parent myself. Yeah, but, if you think that spanking's um, a bad yeah. idea because you didn't like it, I think that's as good a reason as any not to spank. Stand by, Justin. If you want to tell well, more of your story, you're welcome to here in a moment. We'll also take your calls and thoughts. Whether you're a parent or not, your comments are certainly welcome. Whether Mark will take you seriously is another question. I will. It's Free Talk Live. <laughs> Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair pain-free and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits? No. No. And no, no. For a limited time, you can try No-No Pro risk-free. You'll also get the facial kit and a travel case. Get weeks of long-lasting results. That's it. I'm getting a no-no. Great minds do think alike. <laughs> <laughs> try No-No Pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760. 800-952-5760. That's 800-952-5760. 800-952-5760. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info 
or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control. It's all free here at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about verbally abusing children and that it has apparently a pretty deleterious effect according to a new study uh, huffingtonpost.com is recapping that and Derek J has brought that into discuss we'll continue that discussion here in moments also inviting you to join us on the phones here toll free at 855 450 free or join us on Skype our Skype username is lrn.fm so feel free to reach out in that way if you'd like also want to let you know about how to get Bitcoins, Dogecoin, and now Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin, all available at ExpressCoin.com. You can do it with uh, check, wire transfer, money order, and you can now do it with cash. I guess we should say you can now do it again. This used to be available in the past, and now it's back, which I'm really glad to hear about, because this is probably the easiest way to get your Bitcoins, is to take cash into a uh, shared branching credit union. So a credit union that has shared branching, there are a lot of them, uh, just call them first to make sure. You go down there, you get the deposit info from ExpressCoin.com, and then you deposit cash into the account they specify, send them some information to verify it, and uh, you'll be good to go usually in about a business day over at ExpressCoin.com. Plus, they've got a smartphone app now. I would say that the vast majority of Americans live within a 15-minute travel to a, um, to a credit union that has shared branching. Um, you know, if you're not one of them, I'm sorry. Maybe you'll have to have, head a little bit farther. But you probably live out in the uh, boonies anyway, so you're used to that. Well, if that's the case, then you can send them a money order or Indeed. et cetera, et cetera. So check it out, well, ExpressCoin.com. Frankly, if it's a 15-minute drive to wherever you're going, or say it's a half an hour drive, mm-hmm. you'll be back in, and it takes 15 minutes in there. It's an hour and 15 minutes to get the, the job done to get your Bitcoins. It can be, I mean, getting a money order, cashier's check, and those kind of things. Those That's things time take time, consuming. too. Yep, it's true. So go and check it out, expresscoin.com. As we continue here, Justin is with us in Pittsburgh. Justin, you had some more comments. Now, did you say you are a father? No, no, no. I'm not. Okay. No, um, the, I did have one other just quick point to make before you guys can go back to that. Um, you guys, I think it was Mark that had mentioned he would like to see you know, how the study would have been impacted if there were private schools involved in this as well. Um, Pittsburgh does their schools a little bit differently. Uh, on top of just having the standard government schools, they also have religious-based schools that uh, Pittsburgh residents can elect to send their kids to. They also have like a private art school um, that they have an option to go to as well. So if your kid, you know, decides that they want to pursue that kind of thing uh, versus going to a standard high school, they do have other options. Um, I, I just thought that that was huh, okay. something I would point out because it may have. Is that like a voucher system? Way. How does that work? I mean, if, if you're you're saying well, your your child can go to a religious school with some sort of government approval, I'm confused. Yeah, there there's a lot of Catholic schools in Pittsburgh, and uh, you have the option to go to one of the Catholic schools that's available here. Hmm. Um, whenever your kid 
you know, gets past a certain point. I think all of them go to pretty much the same elementary, but uh, after, you know, they reach like late in their, their school or career, their later in their school career, they have the option to kind of decide where they want to go. Got it. So any further comments on spanking versus yelling versus alternative methods? Uh, I mean, you know, just kind of touching on the point that I made before, like I said, I can only speak from my personal experience, but, you know, it, it kind of, it kind of bred a contentment between my parents and I. I, w I wasn't able to have a good relationship with them until recently, you know, when I had the chance to go out on my own because of it. I think that that probably drove the wedge between us a little bit more. How long were they using uh, verbal abuse and physical abuse uh, in your upbringing? How many years? Uh, until I was 17. Wow. Um, whenever I moved out, yeah. That's yeah, wasn't, just I, stunning. So what yeah, did you learn I mean, that when you moved out that uh, was able to bring you sort of back into a relationship with your parents? Um, really, it was just kind of seeing that, you know, life wasn't what I thought that it was. Uh, I kind of had an expectation, I think most kids do, of what adulthood was going to be like. And, yep. you know, to see wor working every day and still not having any money, how frustrating that must have been for my dad. And, you know, then to come home and find out that I had done something in school or, you know, I got, you know, in trouble on the bus or whatever it was. I'm, I'm sure that he was angry about it. And you know, not necessarily that I justify his actions, but I kind of understand where he may have been coming from. Well, I, I think I can understand. And thank you, Justin, for the call tonight. I think I can understand where a parent who spanks is coming from. I can understand being frustrated and angry and uh, disappointed with a child. I mean, obviously, there's going to be times like that. But I don't uh, think violence is the right solution. Yeah, it sounds like Justin touched on the point about uh, the cycle of violence, you know, because he, he brought up how his, his dad had uh, these struggles with work and then he came home and was frustrated at his son. He can't take it out on his boss, but mm -hmm. guess who he can take it out on? And then uh, Justin grows up and learns these lessons as well. So I'm glad he was able to break the cycle. Hopefully when he's a parent, he won't uh, strike his child. You know, I, I over and over again, um, this uh, striking thing seems to come up. I consider it a parenting technique. Uh, I think it's one that should be employed only as a nuclear option. Um, and that by that, I mean, if you're spanking more than once a year or something like that, I think you've gone too far. But I think at the same time, it can be employed in a fashion that doesn't mean that you're exasperated at work, that you don't have control of your emotions, that you don't understand how to discipline kids. Yeah, I think you can do that. Let's mm. continue. We've got Jacob in Washington State. You're on Free Talk Live. Jacob. How's it going, guys? Hey, uh, hey uh, I have an interesting perspective on this because I, um, my, my children are spread out of a long range of ages. Mm. Uh, my oldest, uh, Brian, who's 24 now. Then I have uh, another child, Isaiah, who is, who is 17 now, coming up on 18. Then I have a stepchild who's 16. And then I have a three-year-old <laughs> right now. Uh, we nickname him Thor. So just to give you a perspective on uh, temperament. Now, I, I really, me personally, as a, a father and as a, a, a son that, that grew up with a, a very hostile dad and uh, in, in my mother who used the uh, Bible verse of uh, spare the rod, spoil the child, which she found out later on was a misinterpretation of the Bible, which is actually a shepherd in how he treats his, his sheep oh, interesting. because they always had a rod and they'd pull them away from the cliff. Hmm. So she found that out too late in her mind, and she has still some regrets about that. But um, I, I think it's the personality. I really do of the child. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't think it comes down to a blanket statement, generalization of right and wrong, uh, yes and no. I mean, of course, don't beat the crap out of your kid, excuse the expression, but, you know, uh, I, I, won't, I won't even lay a hand on my little guy. I'm Never. with you, Jacob. I've got to unfortunately let you go. The uh, pong noises in the background are driving me up the wall, but I appreciate uh, it. It's probably not even something you're even aware of, but there's some weird digital distortion on your phone line and i really appreciate the call and the thoughts here tonight so he's saying uh he wouldn't engage in uh, in striking a child but and he does think that it's uh you know based on the personality of the child in certain circumstances 
Well, I think that's an excuse. You know, it's a convenient excuse that a parent can use to, I, I don't know any other way to control my child. Oh, I think that that's absolutely true. And that's another, that's another thing the anti-spankers have to consider for a second is when you tell someone no, you haven't given them any instructions on how to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, let's not forget that when I suggest uh, uh, timeouts that uh, Derek over here, he's like, no, not timeouts. You know, no, no, well, this discipline's bad. Yeah, here's my suggestion for that is not put your child in a situation where he might be walking into a construction site. I, 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 you know, it was at the house. What, what do I do? Lock him up inside? Can I? He's already your biological prisoner. Go ahead. I don't know what biological prisoner it means. You means. had you had this child, and now it's no one else's responsibility but your own. And he's stuck in your home. He can't go out and drive drive away and start a family of his own. He's too young. If he can talk somebody else into taking him, and they think it's a great <laughs> idea, then that's fine. He might be able to, but that, he, you you get what I mean. He just spent the other night in his muff and went in his muffy's room. His muffy um, has a trailer that she stays in on my property. Grandmother. Did, yes, parents. Yeah, Parents need to take more responsibility for the situations that their children are in. If it's gotten to the point where you don't know any other way except to use a timeout or to use physical force, maybe before it got to that point was the right time to do something. Yeah, in this, in which case you are not solving the problem, right? Like you're just blaming. That's just blame. You're a bad parent, and I will agree with you. The vast majority of people that have children are completely unqualified to do so. However, we have not solved anything. We, the human race, got to where we are today. Um, um, through it, certainly tens of thousands of years of evolution of uh, you know, millions of years of evolution of hominids, tens of thousands of the human race, and yep, they weren't very smart. All right, so I like the idea of solutions. It's usually a conversation we have when we talk about spanking. In this case, it's a larger conversation about just being verbally abusive as well. What are some techniques that could work? And Derek J, I'd like to hear from you what you think is good. If time out, because like I was raised with time out, it makes sense to me. That's how I was raised. So what's wrong with that idea? We'll come back with more and get it's your thoughts as well. 855 450 free. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Geico Motorcycle presents Reflections from the Road. Every time I rev my engine down an open stretch of road, I'm glad I switched to Geico Motorcycle Insurance because nothing feels better than saving money with Geico, except maybe the time I saved a life, a squirrel's life. Gave that little feller mouth to mouth, and then he bit me. On second thought, saving money with GEICO probably feels better. GEICO Motorcycle Insurance. See how much you could save. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works. Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen with your Liberty Beat for Monday, July 14th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,314, silver opened at $21.04, and Bitcoin is trading at $620. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, creators of the Antminer S1 180 Gigahash Bitcoin Miner. No pre-order, ships on time, and sometimes it's early. Buy yours today at bitmaintech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. 
That's 844-248-6246. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY, and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online, affordablesound.com, or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, a North Dakota pipeline has leaked 1 million gallons of oil drilling salt water into the ground of a Native American reservation over the 4th of July weekend, with some of it spilling into a nearby lake that's used for drinking water. The leak was not immediately noticed, subsequently devastating local vegetation. The briny salt water, which is between 10 and 30 times saltier than the sea, is a byproduct from drilling and could contain petroleum residue from hydraulic fracking, an energy-intensive process that involves injecting water, sand, and chemicals at high-pressure speeds into rock layers. The lake affected by the spill supplies water for three tribes residing in the western part of the state. For the first time in 25 years, Russia has produced more gold than the United States. That's according to a report by the Russian Times. It's now the world's third biggest producer after China and Australia. Last year, Russia increased its gold production by nearly 13%, while China produced a little over 6% more gold than the previous year. Taxation in Russia includes geological exploration expenses, which contribute to the development of gold production. Mobile marijuana businesses are flourishing across Southern California. As more patients prefer that their pot be promptly delivered rather than having to make a trip to their local dispensary. Nationwide, pot delivery services have nearly tripled in three years, increasing from 877 to over 2,500, according to Weed Maps, a Yelp like online directory for pot businesses. In part, marijuana deliveries have been fueled by the city's efforts to eliminate dispensaries, arguing the shops are considered a curbside eyesore. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Take action and join for free to gain community support and protection. Online at accountableauthority.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, July 14, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Thursday, the co-founder for Ben & Jerry's, Jerry Greenfield, said he wanted to stop Congress from freezing out state efforts to regulate foods with genetically modified ingredients. Originating in Vermont, the ice cream store is in the process of shifting to non-GMO ingredients. Greenfield said food companies should be proud to talk about the ingredients they're using, adding it's simply a matter of transparency and a consumer's right to know. Vermont is the first state to pass a law mandating GMO labeling, an initiative Ben & Jerry's was a leading supporter of. According to a new study published in the Journal of Nature, the class of pesticides linked to colony collapse disorder in the bee populations has now been linked to a drop in bird populations. Dutch researchers found a strong correlation between pesticides measured in surface freshwater and lower population growth rates of 14 species of birds in the Netherlands. The study suggests the bird population may be drinking infected water or feeding their offspring infected insects. The pesticides have been connected to declining honeybee populations. Study co-author Ruud Fobin said, although the correlations are very convincing, they are only correlations and cannot yet be deemed the cause of the bird deaths. Experts claim regular eye tests could be the key to detecting Alzheimer's disease in its early stages, way before symptoms occur. Scientific trials show that a key biomarker for the disease can be identified in the retina and lens of the eye. Researchers say early detection could be a game changer, adding that treatments for the disease often fail because by the time a diagnosis is reached, the brain has already suffered too much damage. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books online at BraveNewBookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, July 14th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. In what medical authorities are calling one of the worst ointment complications in White Plains Hospital's history, area girlfriend Caroline Nagler was rushed to the ER this week after suffering an extreme overdose of scented lotion. With a blood lotion level of 0.45, hospital sources confirmed that Nagler had rubbed onto her body four times the lethal limit of shea butter, green tea cleanses, and naturally soothing mineral therapies. Even putting aside the sheer level of lotion Ms. Nagler had on her person when she arrived at the ER, this was an especially lethal combination she was using. 
she was mixing scented moisturizers, age-defying serums, and even some harder stuff like jojoba and essential fruit extracts. Frankly, she's lucky to be alive. In other news, Beijing's air solidifies. A Delta Airlines counteragent assures a man he will never see his family again. And a mannequin must think he's some pretty hot they say if you love something, let it go. But how could we possibly leave you behind after being blessed with a relationship as unique and complex as this one? For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We will take your calls about anything as we launch here into the second hour of the program. You uh, take control of the airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. And 855-450-3733 is the Pro XPN toll-free line. We also have Skype. You can Skype into the show. Our username is lrn.fm. With you in our studio tonight, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J. is here courtesy of his website, derekj.me. You can go there to follow along with his oodles and oodles of video that he takes. I don't know if it's every day, but it seems darn close. Yeah, I don't upload videos every day, but I, I do uh, take them and I, I put them in playlists. So at least five uh, playlists a week. Very busy. Uh, you're quite the media producer. You also do Peace News Now, which is a long-form program that is uh, done twice weekly, and you can download that over at peacenewsnow.com. That's correct. Uh, let's go back into your phone calls and thoughts here in this hour. I don't know if there's more to say on the violence uh, towards children, the speaking uh, like negatively towards them, yelling at them, insulting them. Turns out there's uh, you know a study that's been done that shows that this may be as damaging as spanking. Is that right? Yeah, and there is a little more to the study. Hold on to that. We'll get to it here. Of course, you can bring up anything. James is in Pennsylvania first. James, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jane, Mark. Uh, yes, hello. Um, I was calling to speak about the uh, CDC incident um, in Atlanta, Georgia. And I really think um, the basically the incident where all the members got exposed to the anthrax um, that they poisoned. What, and, I'm sorry, uh, what I don't know members, about this. What members of what and when? Hello? Excuse me? Uh, what members of what and when did this happen? Um, This, this happened a little bit ago, actually. Um, some members of the um, uh, Center for Disease Control got exposed to anthrax, and um, basically they were keeping it in Ziploc bags, and I really think that uh, the, the, the precautions should have been uh, handle uh, um, a little bit more professionally, and uh, especially with a big corporation like that. Government agency. Gotcha. Yeah. They were they were storing anthrax in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, that doesn't sound like uh, it's very precautionary. Oh yes, and I was um, also another thing is uh, how big is your penis? Oh well, you know that's none of your business. But thanks for the call tonight. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Only some people get to find that out, yeah. and you're not one of them. <laughs> I'm not. Seeing anything in here in this story about, and it's been um, more than a month ago, um, about uh, Ziploc storage bags. Well, so. given the end of his call, I wouldn't necessarily give any credence whatsoever to the beginning of yep. it either. But apparently, <laughs> thanks for checking 80, on it, though. 86 employees uh, were potentially exposed. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. That's uh, probably one of the weaker uh, crank calls that we've had in, in recent times. We've had some good characters recently, though. Uh, these days. Well, the problem with using sort of, uh, you know, vulgar language, that kind of thing, uh, prurient as the uh, the FCC describes it, um, our only governing body in, in radio is the Federal Communications Commission, and they've got rules. And the problem with using sort of prurient language in, in your crank call is it's just not going to get on the air. Well, that one got on. That wasn't uh, profane. You didn't dump any of it? No. Okay. No, I see, I see no reason to do that. He didn't curse. He just asked a dumb question. Okay. He got a dumb answer. 855 well, good. I'm glad we didn't lose any airtime over it. 855-450-3733. Uh, so back to abusing children. The study that you're talking about here, Derek Jade, cited over at Huffington Post. And when you get a chance, shoot me a link. We'll put it up on our Facebook page. Yes. Uh, that way people can check it out on their at their own leisure. But it's, it's saying here that, you know, maybe being uh, verbally abusive is as dangerous as being physically abusive, is as dangerous as spanking a child. That's right. And the study's authors explored more than the effects of harshness alone. They also measured whether parental warmth 
or the degree of love or emotional support and affection between parents and adolescents counteracted the effects of verbal discipline. And it concluded it does not. Interesting. Quote, even lapsing only occasionally into the use of harsh verbal discipline can still be harmful, Wang said in the study's press release. Even if you are supportive of your child, if you fly off the handle, it's still bad. Hmm. But what do they mean by fly off the handle? What do they mean by harsh words? I don't know. I mean, like, are we talking about you know, the very best thing about you ran down your mother's leg? I mean, like, really evil stuff? Or are we talking about, hey, get your act together. I can't believe you talked to somebody like that. Yeah, I, mean, I see what you're saying. There's, there's a big a, difference. Yeah, there is a difference between those statements. I wonder what Wang would say. Harsh verbal discipline deserves greater attention in both research and practice. I think we can all agree mm-hmm. there. Um, the majority of research conducted on harsh discipline has focused on physical discipline in early childhood. However, given that parents tend to resort to verbal discipline as their children mature, it's important that researchers and parents are aware that harsh verbal discipline is ineffective at reducing conduct problems and, in fact, leads to increased adolescent conduct problems and depressive symptoms. So one of the things that's often told by the sort of uh, the peaceful parenting types is, is the suggestion that you should treat your child like you would treat somebody else. And I've tried to use this model when I'm dealing with Jack at times. And I can say that, you know, off, if, if I was treated by an adult the way I have been treated like my child, I might very well use physical, uh, a, you know, a physical reaction to it. So I think that this is really sort of a poor way to describe it. But, yeah, I mean, you know, when a, when a person, a child, is acting in a selfish fashion, I don't think there's anything wrong with, uh, you know, hey, raising your voice a little bit and saying, I can't believe just how selfish you're acting right now. You know, other people need things, too. And letting them know, explaining to them how the world is. And if you have well, why to, why do you need to raise your voice if you're in the same room with? A lot somebody. of times they won't listen. Like they'll continue yammering on while you try talking. I don't know about. So, I mean, so I, I'm down, not a parent, huh? but I don't know. Like what? What? <laughs> that that I don't know. It just seems wrong to me. Like why? Why raise your voice? You don't have to, but you say they yes, yammer on. You do. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm with Derek don't J believe, on this You don't one. believe that uh, ch- children will, you know, continue to repeat the same thing over and over again? You know, I don't want to like get it? be just uh, uh, casting blame all over you, but it isn't there something, There's something before something that? Something about how my parenting technique has brought me to this moment in time today. Yeah, but but do you understand the position <laughs> that I am? I'm in. I am defending all discipline. All different types of discipline here, yeah. and your suggestion is, and it's an easy one, from a person who has no children, is yeah. children should not be disciplined. Like, imagine. Well, is that what Derek J is saying? Because I'm not saying that. I, you know, like I said, I was raised with uh, timeout. Mm-hmm. I was raised with taking away a privilege. For instance, I liked, uh, you know, my video games. For instance. And my yeah. parents had a great argument for me once, and that was because I complained because they took away the power adapter for my Sega Genesis at one point. And I complained. I said, hey, I bought that Sega Genesis. You can't take that away. It's mine. Yeah. Because uh, I'd saved up the money, and it was my Genesis. But they made the point that they paid for the, paid the power bill. So I had to admit they got me on that one. Okay. But I well, never so felt I point am out that you're abused. talking about a 10, 12, uh, 14-year-old kid at this point. We're not talking about a 6-year-old. And that well, this, this study was done on all ages. Third- no, 13 and 14 year olds. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And I will take the position that I am anti discipline. If that means hitting your children or uh, treating them uh, like they're your property and they're not their own human beings, then yeah, I am anti discipline. Well, wait, okay. So, what, so tell me I'm about- for negotiation. That's what I'm for. You can negotiate with children as young as two. So can I negotiate to not give them uh, dessert unless they do whatever it is that I'm asking them to do? I think negotiation is a great skill to teach children, and yelling is not. Negotiation is a fabulous skill to teach children. So then would negotiation also include the taking away of the power adapter of the Sega? But the question... It Hold might. On. I'm just I'm manipulating in that case as a parent the things that are mine to negotiate right. with, right? Yeah, I, I think it might. I think it might include those but things where if do you, you own them. What are they? What you know? Who? What is the kids to begin with? You see, this is a property rights issue. Is Some child, things are the kids. Like when, what? 
like gifts, things that you give the kid, That's they true. belong to them now. Are you saying that they can do whatever they want with them? Well, yeah, what, what would they do that would be bad? Well, well suppose they want to play with their uh, toy that was given as a gift and not go to school. We'll come yeah. back with... <laughs> yeah, they should just not be able to do that. want to hear your thoughts on discipline. How far is too far? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Derek J says you should just negotiate with the kids. What do you think? This is Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, July 14th, 2014, gold opened at 1306.20. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1353.63, 676.81 for a half ounce, or 338.41 for a quarter ounce. That's 1353.63, 676.81, and 338.41. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. North, an extremely vocal opponent of gay marriage, drew fire during his 2010 re-election campaign for saying that the legalization of gay marriage would lead to man-horse marriages. In one instance, he told the New Haven Register, quote, it's a slippery slope. If we allow two men to marry, what's next? Men marrying horses? But yesterday, North found himself at the center of a media firestorm when the New York Times published photos of North on what appears to be romantic outings with a horse. Gathered during the Times' two-month investigation, the pictures show North in almost a dozen locations with the same three-year-old mare. A former aide discovered links to numerous horse-related sites, including phillyfreaks.com and hothindquarters.com on North's work computer. The Times is accusing North of using federal funds to pay for luxurious trips, including a three-night stay at the high-end Sueño Stables in Catalonia, Spain, last month. North released a statement yesterday claiming he only spent time with the horse twice while conducting research for his anti-gay marriage project. This is the Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is 
Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything and share your thoughts on discipline. Not just spanking, but verbal discipline. Harsh uh, verbal terminology being directed towards your children could be very damaging. That's what one study is saying here that uh, we're going to send out actually shortly on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. You can take a closer look at it when you get a chance. Want to get your thoughts here? You're welcome to join us on the phones, toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And if those numbers weren't confusing enough for you, Mark, throw out some more. I've got some more. So we're having a contest. We're giving away some hardcover books from uh, Bain Publishers. One okay. of them is 1636, C- Commander Cantrell in the West Indies. And the other one is rescue mode and these are you know great hardcover books they're probably about 30 bucks a piece they will be sent to you all you have to do is enter the contest it's a text contest so what you do is you text in in one case you text in 1636 that's the name of the one book in the other case you text in rescue both in both cases you text into this number i'm going to give you now the number spells out e now it that's the name of the company e now it the number is Uh 366-948. That's 366948, mm-hmm. or it spells E now it. And you can enter to win. We're gonna do the drawing. I guess it's gonna be Tuesday and Wednesday at noon Eastern time. Okay. So and, and text what to that number again? 1636 and rescue. We're doing it on the Facebook page. So if you need any more information, you can just go to Facebook.freetalklive.com. Mm, okay. I pinned it to the top so that uh, you'll have the opportunity to uh, do it. It'd be nice if you'd like and comment on it, but I know that you don't want other people to win, so you're probably not going <laughs> to. All right, let's go to the phones here. And uh, ladies first, Monica's on the line in California. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hi, guys. Um, this is Monica. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure, and go ahead. the show, as always. And I'm calling because I do think that verbal abuse is harmful. And I speak from the perspective of someone who was a kid who dealt with it and is to this day as an adult at age 43. And I do not have what I say human children of my own. I do plan to have kids at some point, but I do have four kids. So I have a little bit perspective, even though other folks do you might yell disagree. at them? And if, if these fur children ever do something bad and you have to yell at them? They do, but I don't yell. And, there, you know, there are mixed perspectives on parenting human children, just like there are for our furry children. There certainly and are. And what I've what I've noticed is the same general rules apply. They're individuals, just like the yep. human kids are individuals. And it's kind of... I didn't intend for it to be my testing ground, but it's turning out to be that way. And I feel it really is making me a better parent now and in the future, no matter what kind of kid I'm raising. I'm all and for that. I believe everything you've said is completely true. Spending time on uh, on pets, uh, learning how to you know deal with pets, absolutely is training grounds for having kids. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And Mark, I admire so much about how you're raising your pigs, so I definitely can relate to that. In the same way, but then I get into this idea of this this discipline, and I don't think I thought about it before until you guys started talking about it today, the idea of discipline itself, whether it's good or bad, what it means, how we define it. And I'm starting to almost lean toward anti-discipline after talking about how people discipline and all the ways that I feel that it's harmful. Um, my experience about being verbally abused uh, it feels kind of complicated. I'm still dealing with it. I come from a background where um, one of my parents, my mom, would just yell. I mean, it was about all sorts of things. It was condescending, insulting, highly negative. I think of it as toxic. And that started as a young age, and it was toward me, it was toward my father, all sorts of individuals, even people that were outside of the home when we were simply going out and running errands. But yet, on the flip side, she was very affectionate. She could be so loving. She told me she loved me. She told me she was proud of me. But then an hour later, the next day, she would find something to be upset about. And it could be something like I, I did a chore not to her standard, which I get. You know, she needs to teach me and tell me, hey, kiddo, I don't like the way you're doing that. But I think that there is a more productive way to do it. And I think Ian and Derek J have touched upon it several times in the show today where it's about negotiating. It's about teaching that skill to an individual at a young age about this is how I want this done instead of yelling all sorts of insults and making everybody tense 
And to this day, I have a strained relationship with my mom that is very difficult. For example, she's very ill, and I'm torn because I love her. I want to be there for her. But she treated me so badly, and she continues to do so. So throughout time, it did create depression. I've worked through that and become a better person, found mm-hmm. the tools in order to make myself healthy and positive and be a great wife. Well, I know that's a bit subjective, but, you know, be, be a healthy wife and be a healthy mom now and in the future. But I do think that that negative verbal abuse is extremely harmful. And we need to find an alternative. So give me some alternatives. Now, you said you have not yet had children. You've only had pets thus far. Did I hear you correctly? No, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. I have been in situations where I've you know, right. Um, I think that's valid. Of, I, I, I hate it when I people too. diminish um, working with kids as though that's not like having kids. Mm. I think it absolutely counts. If you're some kind of counselor or teacher or you babysat, these things absolutely count. Now, Ian, I would point out, never babysat anything. <laughs> you know, I have a, a dog. <laughs> and you <laughs> said it counts to have uh, an animal. I, I think you'd be an awesome father, mind you, uh, because I, I, I see the way you take care of your animals. You, however, dismiss that. Now, okay, but Monica, let's get more specific because it's easy to say, oh, yeah, verbal abuse, bad, physical abuse, bad, spanking, bad. And I agree on all those counts. But what do you do as an alternative? Well, I think you've already raised some of those solutions, so I just endorse those. Um, I do like the idea of time out. I have to admit, I've never used it, so I might not have much credibility. Huge fan of the Super Nanny show you guys were talking about earlier. Is that what it's called, Super Nanny? Yeah. Super Nanny. Yeah, Yeah, with the woman who was from England. She's just fantastic, and you could see these techniques put into play, and she wasn't yelling at anybody. She was allowing the opportunity for the kids to be heard. That was actually a large part of her show, was to hear where they're coming from. They wanted to be heard. And I remember being a child and having that situation and having it continue now, which is so bizarre because I lived all these years, you'd think that I would be treated differently. But it's something where the parent has to respect the child, and that's really the foundation of it. And... It's about giving that child the opportunity to talk. I, I remember talking to my brother about it, and he said, you know, he, he had one situation where my mom just laid into him, and it was horrible. He said, if she had just asked me what was going on and why I was doing this and how she could help make it better or how we could talk about it, that would have changed everything. Hmm. But her initial reaction was to lash out and yell over silly, ridiculous things. And I think that it's about really talking. You know, we talk about communication and how important that is in relationships. Why is it so important in adult relationships, but maybe not as much with children? And I do think that negotiating works. I totally I agree. With kids on my own. And Derek J. pointed out you can negotiate with kids, you know, two years of age. I think it might even go, you know, if I can negotiate with my pet, and I'm serious, I can't, it sounds silly. No, it doesn't. But I can. I have a dwarf bunny. And, you know, well, I do have other that animals silly. as well, but I do, I know, right? I love, I love the points, Monica. Thanks for making them tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got time for you. Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner, and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. 
the successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. Freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, we invite you to take control toll-free. You don't have to call about raising kids, discipline uh, versus non-disciplinary approaches, negotiating, communicating versus yelling. I don't think if you're communicating, you're very effective. I don't think if you're yelling, you're very effectively communicating. Uh, and as it turns out, if you're yelling, you might actually be doing damage to your kids. We'll continue the discussion here. Your thoughts are welcome at 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. And if you care about your online privacy, you really need to take some time to go and check out ProXPN.com slash FTL. You'll learn about ProXPN. It's global. It's a global virtual private network. It's software that encrypts your data. You can download their software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. And uh, there's also Linux option as well. It's just a little bit different to get things started with Linux. But ProXPN will work for you. And when they encrypt your data, that means your internet service provider can't snoop on you anymore. They can't be keeping records on you, which they're probably doing. Maybe keeping records of every website you visit for up to five years in some cases. Uh, so go and learn more about ProXPN. It only takes a moment to download and get it started. You can use their free account just to test it out, proxpn.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade, though, to their premium account, you can do it for as little as 5 bucks a month using our discount code, which is FTL20. That saves you 20% off the price of that premium account for the lifetime of the account. That's not some weak introductory offer. That's 20% off for the long, you know, as long as you have an account with them. It's good to go. And you want to get the price down to 5 bucks a month, just buy the annual plan at ProXPN.com slash FTL. There is a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. So again, ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started, and then use code FTL20 to save that 20% off. 
on the premium package. We continue here. We're talking about alternatives because we've, uh, you know, at least Derek and I have determined that uh, spanking, bad, uh, verbally abusing a child, yelling, calling names, insulting, these are bad things as well. Some people may feel like they're better off doing those things rather than, oh, I don't hit my kid. I just say things to them. Well, it turns out it may be just as bad to say mean things and to be awful verbally. And we've been well. talking more broadly about discipline. I'd like to interject a definition of discipline. Oh, please, yes. Noun. The practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. Okay. That's the definition of discipline. So I'm against discipline because I think you can negotiate with people and uh, get what you want, create a win-win situation, rather than using punishment to uh, get them to obey. But as we found out earlier, the lines are blurred a little bit, right? I mean, because I was talking about timeouts, or as my parents did, they took away things that were valuable or important to me, like uh, like a video game system, for instance. Um, but you kind of said that you would consider that to be negotiation and not discipline. But the goal's the same, isn't it? To create, uh, you know, a, a situation in which behavior is what it is ex- within an acceptable range. That outside of that acceptable range, something must be done to rein in that behavior. Else, there may be destruction to property. There may be a child physically harming themselves on accident. Uh, so something must be done, right? No, the important distinction is are you creating a win-win situation with this other individual, this other human being? Are you teaching how to create win-win situations or is it win-lose? That's well, what it's about. I like the idea of things always being win-win, but when things get complicated with a child, as you know, Mark has brought up with a child running into traffic or the classic example of a child about to put their hand on some sort of hot plate. No, I object to those examples outright because parents, if they're good parents, would not be having their children <laughs> about to touch a hot stove. Well, are you telling, uh, well, what about going out in, uh, in traffic? Are you saying that parents shouldn't let their kids out of the house for the is, first six years? Is it crazy to consider that parents should be keeping an eye on their, their children when they're out in the front yard near I don't a think street? That I don't think it's crazy, but I think it is crazy to suggest that you can keep an eye on your child every moment. I can tell you that if you look away for 30 seconds, your kid can do something that terrifies you, that you just don't understand. <laughs> like This is the one thing I will say of people that don't have kids. You simply don't understand fear, abject fear. Fear. I didn't know fear until I had a child because now the most valuable thing in the world can be taken from me. You can only lose money or a house uh-huh. or a car, which is nothing. I would love to see my house and car and everything I've got laid into a pile and set on fire <laughs> as long as my child could grow up happy, healthy, and live a good life. Aww. That's fine by me. So, like, you have, I operate from a completely different standpoint. Now, I I'd like to talk to you about negotiations. Yeah. Yeah, let's negotiate. This morning, I had a um, a haircut appointment with uh, Master Edgington, and I had to go get a haircut. <laughs> and you'll see, I have I'm finally looking co- good. Coiffed Who's you. Master Edgington? Your wife or your son? Uh, uh, no, uh, <laughs> Master is the firstborn male child. Oh, uh, that's uh, you can go ahead and look that up while hmm. uh, while we're while grown. I'll just folks take your are, word for it. While grown folks are talking, you can take <laughs> it. Too. And so, Master Edgington and I have to go, and uh, we we have to get our haircut, and it's at nine o'clock. Uh-huh. And this lady, she makes a living cutting hair and her expectation. Now, if I show up at 10, 10 15, she can't cut my work. hair, right? Yeah, Great. No, now we work. understand. We're, we're under a schedule here. Now, I have to get up a little earlier than I used to. I, I usually do. I've got chores to do before we go. Nine o'clock is a little early for me, a person who works in the evening. Mm-hmm. So I get up early, um, take care of my stuff. I've told Jack several times along the way, hey, haircut we got to leave at such and such a time this sounds like a really interesting story i'm going to put it on hold and we'll continue it here in a moment don't let us forget to get back to that here we got to finish up mark's story but i want to make sure we get tuts on the line here in minnesota because we can't miss out on tuts i mean that's a cool name tuts you're on free talk live (laughs) what's on your mind tonight hey guys how you doing hey hey tuts go ahead oh yeah i was just it kind of like is sad that your last caller talking about children doesn't have children of her own and compared it to babysitting and watching a nanny, British nanny on TV. Why do you think that's sad? sad. (laughs) Because children are all different. They are all different. Every parent knows that. 
And to get your guys' story good, you both are kind of right. Um, you need a little here. discipline. You don't need verbal. But when parents see what they're going to do, like, oh, I'm going to take away whatever, then they take it away. Okay, so what's a and, good what's a yeah, good uh, they, approach for discipline? They dis- shouldn't have children in the street because a good parent would be watching their children. That's right, no, no doubt, Tuts. Um, <laughs> but I believe so, Mark. I believe Mark when he says he's a good parent. I've seen him with his son. I think that he is a good parent, and I think I that have, anybody can lose track of their kid for a moment. I have a few kids, and my kids have always been on A and B on a roll, and they work really hard. And I don't have internet. I don't have iPads. I don't even have cell phones. How'd they make the honor what's roll? A, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's, what's a method for you, Tuts, at home? Reading. What's a method for you as far as disciplining a child or negotiating with a child or whatever term you use? How do you correct misbehavior? What's one of your techniques? Actually, I just say, um, okay, if you don't do this, I'd really appreciate it if you do. And then I, I will say, okay, if you do this, um, we'll do something really good. You know, like watch a really good movie they can pick out. Something positive. Mm-hmm. And incentives. Boy, their room is clean and they get to pick out Always worked for me. Incentives and... were always a big uh, success for me when I was a kid. I remember when I was very young, my parents had gold stars. You know, if I was good, I'd get it. Oh, I gold... tried that because I do. I did have a daughter that, you know, she is ADHD. And um, no, that didn't work too well. Gold so stars I had didn't to work do for a you. Different kind of. With the gold stars, and then still, all of these like, things you know, are negotiation candy, style, right? Like, no, I'm not doing candy. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad one. You definitely don't want to use candy. Same thing with no. like training dogs. You don't want to use and food. And the gold stars didn't work, so I kind of changed her thinking of positive. It took uh, many years to do that, but we'd go for like um, walks and window shopping and. Uh, you know, things that, you know, she'd love to do, like maybe bouncing a ball to the wall. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I always like that one. Thanks, Tuts, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Yeah. So, Derek J., how do you feel about incentivizing? Like yeah, I that? think that's a great suggestion. I'd like to hear more uh, active listening from parents. You know, ask your children why are they acting up and, and do it when they're calm. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You know, one of the other things I love about this topic is it really brings out the female callers on this show. And uh, it's always nice to have. More on the way here. This is Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. 
Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE and join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features on the site for free, freetalklive.com. Derek J. also does a lot for free. He's got derekj.me, his website. And have you made a post up there already, Derek J., about your new fundraiser? No, that's at freekeen.com. Oh, yeah, Tell I should have just that. posted it to both of them, but uh, recently I was denied a concealed carry license Again. here. Yeah, for the second time here in New Hampshire, uh, which is a shall issue state, by the way. So they claim. <laughs> now, shall yeah, that issues. means that they're supposed to give me a concealed carry license just for applying. If I'm not a felon and I don't have a history of domestic violence, uh, then they shall issue a license. But that. So Isn't how long what have happened? you been beating your uh, your boyfriend? <laughs> well, I've never been accused of anything violent ever in my I life. I accused Derek J of something violent. Well, now you've been until accused. now, evidence, sir. <laughs> yeah. Just like, no, no, no. He didn't claim that. So, oh, that's true. Well, so now uh, I've been denied, and the reason given by the ch- police chief himself. Yes, that's right. The highest, uh, Ken Miola, has decided. Uh, Because I have had several contacts with the police that were assaultive or threatening, those are his words describing me, and uh, that's what he says is the justification that I cannot conceal carry uh, a weapon. So I'm appealing this, and— Hold on. Have you ever been charged with criminal threatening? No. Have you ever been charged with assault? No. Okay. But he did list several other arrests of mine uh, that are all included in my movie, Victimless Mm -hmm. Crime Spree, which people can watch free online at victimlesscrimespree.com. If if you doubt the claim that I am a peaceful person, please check out my documentary and see if any of these arrests, which he has noted as the reason for my denial, uh, if you think that that's a good, legitimate reason for a person to be denied. I've and never seen you use violence. Even when violence was used against you, you were pepper sprayed, you were thrown off your bicycle, you were attacked, you were hit uh, mm-hmm. by the cop that threw you off the bicycle, and you never swung back. No, I never lifted a finger. And if this is somehow justification that a person should be disarmed, well, then I wonder what the Keen police should be doing, <laughs> perhaps disarming themselves. Anyway, yeah, don't work that I way. promise no. they're not going to do that. Right. So but I you can, can appeal. appeal this decision, and I'm going to. I've sought out the best lawyer possible, as I believe. Uh, he's won several <laughs> cases, and I have reported on this man it, for Peace News Now about cases he's won all around the country Hmm. in places as 
harsh on gun laws as New Jersey. Yeah, this is Evan Knappen. And That's where he's from, right? New Jersey. I, you know, yes. I couldn't tell you where okay. he's from, but uh, I can tell you that he's the best uh, gun you know, arms attorney because he's into knives too, knife freedom too, um, in the state of New Hampshire and probably the Northeast. Mm. I mean, he's really. You know, this is his bellowack, and he is uh, good at it. I, I, it is an opinion that he's the best, but that's, it's a that's my darn opinion. widely held opinion. <laughs> yeah, and I want to win. I mean, this is uh, something I'm I'm taking very seriously. I am a peace activist, and I I want peace. I want world peace. I want peace in my life. But uh, part of that, I believe, is the ability to defend oneself. And uh, even though I'm a peaceful person, I still want the ability to conceal carry a firearm. You realize that not everybody is a right. peaceful person. So and... I'm going to appeal this. I have retained hmm. Evan Knappen as a lawyer, and I am running a fundraiser to help cover those costs at GoFundMe.com slash gun rights. Now, why should somebody uh, participate in this? I mean, what's it going to do for me? Uh, you know, why, why would I give you money to uh, make sure that you can carry a weapon. If little old me can be denied a concealed carry license, then you bet it can happen to you. If you care about gun rights, then you should care about this fight because it could happen to anybody. The justification is really that I'm an activist, that I've done something to stand up for freedom. Mm -hmm. And this is going to actually set precedent, right? This will set precedent because I'm considered, according to the chief of police, an unsuitable person, which is one of those catch-alls in the law. You know, it's no domestic violence, no uh, felonies, but then also if we don't like you, we can just deny you. Well, mm -hmm. I don't want that to be the case for me or any other person. So if you believe in the freedom of self-defense, then please support my case at GoFundMe.com slash gun rights cool and i imagine that appeal has to be filed relatively soon yes it has to be filed within the next 30 days mm -hmm. and so it'll probably be filed well before then and then the, the 30 hearing days from happens, the decision right and then but, the hearing happens within 14 days so it will be quick yeah, but let me ask right. you this that's strange um I, I don't think that this actually does have a a, a date to it because if he in 30 days, if he doesn't file the appeal, then can't he just write another letter asking for, um, I suppose, you know, for his gun right? I mean, because he hasn't been. He could be denied again. Right. Yeah, there's just no could. conviction here. You know, there's nothing. This is just some bureaucrat, some yeah. paid government bureaucrat that supposedly works for you saying, nope, well, in a shall issue state where they have, uh, you know, they have points where you can be denied, but you don't fit any of those points. I shall just not issue it to yeah. you. He supposedly works for uh, for us. Us, but he won't talk to me. Uh, apparently, uh, does he talk to you? No, Jake? no, he will not speak to me. I've seen this police chief Ken Miola several times in city council meetings. I say, "Hey, Ken," and he just rude. looks like he, you know, he can't even see me. Just uh, so rude, so childish. You know, the funny thing is, uh, a lot of times activists in the area here in Keene are accused of being childish. Oh, you guys are so childish. You're just going out and smoking pot and drinking and, you know, you, you're using chalk. You're so childish. But they were set leveling those before any of these other accusations were leveled. They say you're childish because you don't want to do what they say. Mm. And they, you know, oh, this comes back to this discipline thing. This is, this is thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years of hominids smacking their progeny for not doing and saying the what the things that they want. You know, I consider to be childish. I consider not speaking to another human being um, based on whatever ridiculous personal reason when you're supposedly their employee, you're supposedly their servant, um, acting like a small child and, you know, giving you the silent treatment. That's what I get from the police chief. And in addition to that, I also think it's very childish. I had a man walk up to me at court today. I was doing jury nullification outreach. And this man took one of the flyers from me, ripped it in half, and then handed it back to me. I also consider destruction of other people's property. Uh, yeah, that's that not destruction be... of people's property. You handed it to him. That's and... true. I still consider that to be a very childish oh, I, I would act. say that it's, uh, you know, what he's trying to do is he's trying to instigate you yeah. into doing something. And I don't know if I'd call that childish behavior. I just told him that, to call that it childish. was rude. Yeah, it's, it's bullying is what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, bullying is a kind of a childish thing to do as well. Anyway, let's go back to your phone calls and thoughts here. Let's talk to Joe Lou, listening in Utah, KZNU. Hey, Joe Lou. Hi. Hey there, you're on the air. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of agreements and a couple of disagreements with you guys. Mm. Go right ahead. Um, right. 
<laughs> well, first of all, I was raised with abusive parents. My dad wasn't as abusive as my mother. However, he was very um, verbally um, abusive, but he wasn't around that much. So I didn't get as much as if he had been around. My mother, on the other hand, she was screaming, yelling, hitting. She would take hangers, yardsticks, uh, go tell us to get a branch off the tree and strip the leaves off, and she'd swat us with them. Hmm. And you knew when she's after you that you, you couldn't get away. She was going to get you. So I ran screaming to my bedroom and cowered in the corner. Oh. And as a result, my adult years have been very uh, timid and insecure and people can intimidate me very easily um although i've tried to work through a lot of that and hopefully i have but then i had five children of my own and um when my youngest was three i took on seven stepchildren wow whoa yeah so that was a dozen and yep. um each child is different, and you have to be careful how to discipline each child. Some people are going to argue with you no matter what. Some some children will be quiet and calm and will cooperate no matter what. Um, so what do you do so, when they're not quiet and they're not calm and not cooperative? What's your approach? And obviously you said well, kids are different. So what's one of your approaches? Right. Well, when I when my older kids were small, unfortunately, I didn't know any other way to parent. So I did use the swatting, but not the bad swatting that my mom used. I did break a spoon over my son's behind for not doing the dishes, and then I felt really, really bad. You and, broke the spoon? Uh, wow. At some point or another, a spoon's going to have to break. Hang on. I want I want you to tell me more about your history, Jill Lou. We're going to come back with you here. If you can hang through the news, we'd love to bring you back into hour number three, which is coming up next here in moments. Enough time for your call and thoughts. Plenty of it, actually. Toll-free numbers, 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll-free line. And this is Free Talk Live. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, now well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. I try to put myself out there, but it seems they're all the same. Just telling me what I want to hear. Don't fret. You can find your car insurance soulmate. It's easy at Geico.com. You can pay your bill, manage your policy, and you could even save some major cash. If we could reach through the computer to pull your chair out for you and give you a kiss on the hand, we would. Because you deserve to be in a happy, healthy car insurance relationship. That's what life is all about. For a free rate quote, visit Geico.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, July 14th, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.07 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,315 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $622. Antiwar.com reports, though there doesn't seem to be much momentum behind it so far, former Israeli Defense Minister Shaul Mofaz is floating a proposal for an endgame solution to the ongoing Gaza Strip violence that would involve a demilitarization deal for the tiny enclave. The details are pretty broad at this point, but it would seek a disarmament deal for all significant armed factions in the Gaza Strip and would offer an initiative for some $50 billion in foreign aid. The big difficulty will be getting the armed factions to agree to this when they aren't the ones getting the aid. Rather, the proposal suggests funneling all the aid through the Palestinian Authority. Some quotes are already emerging spurning this plan, with one of the unnamed leaders saying they don't want to give up their capabilities capabilities to defend Gaza. At the same time, it's undeniable that they aren't being effective in such defense, nor is there really a sufficient amount of weaponry the factions could have to realistically deter Israeli invasions. On the Israeli side, the problem is twofold. Getting the Netanyahu government to stop the offensive and getting them to agree to let large amounts of aid into the Strip. So far, the indications are they won't be willing to do either. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. NPR reports, calling the church sex abuse scandal a leprosy in our house, Pope Francis tells an Italian newspaper that one in 50 Catholic clerics are pedophiles. In an interview with Eugenio Scalfari, the founder of La Repubblica, Francis is quoted as saying that advisors in the church reassure me that the problem amounts to about 2%. According to a translation used by Reuters, he was quoted by the newspaper as saying, This data should hearten me, but I have to tell you that it does not hearten me at all. In fact, I think it is very grave. He also said the church must weep and make reparations for its crime. Scalfari also quoted Francis as noting that the requirements of celibacy in the priesthood is a problem and that there are solutions and I will find them. The Pope said that celibacy was instituted 900 years after our Lord's death and that in some Eastern churches under the Vatican's purview, priests were already allowed to marry. The Vatican, in a statement, said that Scalfari normally conducts long interviews with public figures without taking notes, quoting them later from memory. Papal spokesman Father Federico Lombardi said that the quote on celibacy, as well as another in which Francis says cardinals were among the sex abusers, are inaccurate. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Antiwar.com reports, the Islamic State, the ISIS-declared caliphate spanning both Iraq and Syrian territory, has a new rival in the Aleppo province of northern Syria, as Jabhat al-Nusra, al-Qaeda's wing in that nation, has declared the region an Islamic emirate. The borders for the Islamic State are nebulous and growing, while the Nusra emirate appears to aim for control just of Aleppo's immediate vicinity, with the hopes of forming other emirates elsewhere across the region. That sets them up as a rival of ISIS, but also one with a different approach, as the ISIS Caliphate has designs on spanning the whole Muslim world as a top-down organization run by Caliph Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, whereas the assorted emirates would simply be united under al-Qaeda's interpretation of Sharia law. Nusser's ability to set up an emirate with significant territory remains to be seen, as they have largely not fared well in combats with ISIS, who has taken the lion's share of territory across Syria. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Fact Zone. I'm Brooke Alvarez. Our top story tonight, Congress has passed a bill naming incomprehensible shouting the official language of the United States. I'm sick and tired of listening to people who say that Americans should not know what to know, and that's not what it is, what the policy is. The red-blooded American is what we have in this day and age. Under the new law, public school classes will only be taught in incomprehensible shouting, and government agencies will no longer offer translators to non-shouting speakers. In addition, a new test will be added to the naturalization process, whereby potential immigrants must prove they have a working knowledge of incomprehensible shouting before they're granted citizenship. The movement started in 2008 with a grassroots organization called Americans for Doing It Right because we got it now because who else right? Come on! This is the Onion News Network, a tomahawk of honesty in the skull of lies. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. You can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll-free line. And we've been talking about parenting tonight. Uh, the discussion is not about spanking per se, although it has certainly touched on that topic, but also about verbal discipline. And turns out there's a study that's been done that Derek J. brought in a summary of from Huffington Post that says that uh, verbally abusing kids, yelling at them, insulting them, uh, talking down to them, the, these can be things that may damage a child as much as uh, physical abuse or spanking. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. That has led to a larger topic about, well, okay, what's, what's something you can do if, if uh, these sorts of verbal, verbal or physical discipline methods are ineffective or dangerous to children in, their, uh, for, for, in the long run or even in the short term? Uh, then what is a solution? What is something that a parent can do that is acceptable, that is going to be as, as healthy of a, a measure of correction uh, as possible? Because there obviously are certain things you don't want your kids to do. You don't want them to put themselves in danger. You don't want them to put others in danger. You know, you don't want the teeth to rot out of their head. So it's, you know, somehow you have to negotiate these things incentives we talked about incentives we talked about timeout as an option and we've got joe lou on the line here was telling us her story plus we've got to get back to mark's story that he was telling about the appointment he was running late for uh and what he was going to do in that case but joe lou you're back on you've waited patiently through the news and continue with your story thank you i was just um Reminded by my son who does live with me that it was three spoons I broke over him, not just one. Because you were telling us you had uh, five kids, you ended up having uh, seven, what was it, adopted uh, kids? Seven stepchildren. Seven stepchildren. Seven yeah. stepchildren. And, right. uh, and you were telling us that in the beginning you used some physical discipline with them. Did you change your mind about that later? I did because it made me feel bad. It made me feel like I had hurt my child, and that is a hurt that a parent does not want to feel. Mm. How many uh, How many years did it take you to come to that conclusion? Which Which kid, I guess, was it? <laughs> which okay, number? Okay, uh, probably about four. Four did, kids or four years? Four kids. Okay, four great. kids in. Did you feel like it wasn't making uh, an, an impact? I mean, because, you know, using the violence, it wasn't getting the results that uh, that you were looking for? Right, because he still wouldn't do the dishes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> three spoons later. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, three spoons later. <laughs> Joe Lou, anything else you want to share about your experience tonight? Yeah, I found out that negotiating with very young children doesn't work very well. They don't understand well enough to... Um, be able to communicate with that kind of a um, situation. That makes sense. I mean, their their vocabulary isn't there. Their their methods of thinking aren't certainly aren't the same. Um, although, what do you do instead? I mean, if you can't negotiate below the age of two or whatever it is, three, what uh, what can you do? You know, that's where the spanking comes in. They say if you're not mad, you can give them three swats. But if you give them more than three swats, it's because it's you're angry and you're um, who says both that because of you. Um, well, I've heard it several places. I'm sure I've read it in a book too. 
Sounds like an old maid story uh, to me. I mean, it- well, it's a it's it's a le- it's a list of instructions, which I think that uh, you know is something that needs to be considered here. Um, I we had a two year old. I mean, you know, I have a six year old, so clearly I had a two year old at some point, and. The, you know, somehow or another, we managed to make it through that without uh, using spanking as a as a system. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in a lot of cases with two year olds, you're just kind of re- trying to redirect, and you know, you can pick them up. They they aren't that uh, you know, it's not that difficult. To, every once in a while, though, they they're dead set on doing something. And like for instance, you got to get in the car. You know, you put them in the seat, you strap them in. Right. Joe Lou, thanks for the call nope. tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is 855 450 free. Let's get Aaron on the line in North Dakota. You're on Free Talk Live. Aaron. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Well, I was just thinking about the um, the definition that you gave of discipline, and I'm kind of surprised that you don't like that definition uh, because it doesn't talk at all about abuse. And I think that. When we're talking about discipline and abuse, uh, a lot of times they get confused. I I agree very strongly with people that say that we should discipline. Um, I've got three boys of my own, five, three, and ten and a half months, and I I want to live with them and enjoy their company. I don't want them to, you know, I don't want to be trying to negotiate with them as we live in the same house and the same space and they're using my stuff and you know I don't want to be a negotiator until they get old enough to get out of my house I want to be able to live with them and enjoy their presence I'm not sure why negotiation would preclude enjoyment well, I think that this is no I think this is a great point that I haven't ha- yet ha- been able to bring up now where does the child get to negotiate from what do they have to bring to the they table? They don't have that much. They have right. little to bring to the table. They were born with nothing. They came out, they weighed eight pounds, and that's all they had. They have their actions. They have their actions. You need to be quiet. They can take ownership of that. I'm I'm curious, uh, since you're such a yeah, fan of discipline, how did what does discipline look like for your ten month old? Well, there's a lot of uh just really really basically telling them no. And one of the things that I mean, you cannot back no up if you don't have anything that follows that. Like what? And like either a flick to the mouth or a spank on the bottom. Um, but like you were saying, you can't negotiate with someone that young. Does it trouble you that that's illegal in most of Europe? Hitting a 10-month-old in the mouth as an adult? I didn't realize that, no. Where where is this in Europe? I mean, is it European Union? I, I've heard. This. I'll get I'll get some countries yeah, uh, I, on a list for you. I've heard it, but I know that there was a there was a te- there was a Texas judge actually that uh, threatened to take a the, a child away from a woman for spanking too. So, I mean, to some extent, right. this uh, this encroachment on uh, and parents and and discipline is uh, moving here. How do you think, uh, Aaron, that people are able to raise their children, as Mark said, uh, at very young ages? By not using physical violence uh, to you know, to discipline them, to use other methods. I mean, do you think it's it's possible that you could steer away from violence and and come up with some other options? Well, I I don't use violence. Well, you just and said you'd what, flick a child in the. Hold on, you just said you'd flick a child in the mouth and or spank them. You don't think yeah. uh, hitting is considered violence? No. There are cases, I mean, there's a lot of cases, too many cases where it is used in violence, but I am I am definitely not disciplining or training my children with violence. How, no. how is it that you can disconnect uh, spanking from violence? You are striking someone without their permission. Uh, that is by definition a, the act of, an act of violence to me. Uh, technically. I suppose if, if I came up and I way, spanked but... you, Aaron, if I walked up to you and said, Aaron, you've been a bad boy and I gave you a good spanking on the behind, would that be an assault? Uh, not if you had the proper authority over me. Whoa, Definitely wait not. a minute. You... So so as long oh, as yeah. you would have all the authority that if I mean, if you had that kind of authority over me, then it would be your responsibility to give me that. 
Wow, that sounds really, I mean, that sounds twisted to me. Um, well, there are some backwoods countries in Europe that would disagree with you, like Denmark and Norway and Sweden and uh, Finland, Poland, Brazil. I mean, I mean, Brazil's not in Europe, but um, all of these countries have full abolitions on corporal punishment in the home. Right, and that's fine. And if that, was, if that were to come here, I would have to abide by that and find different methods to be able to train my children. Well, see, I don't think that's the way you solve problems. I don't think that making this illegal is the right option. I think that uh, we need no, to persuade so parents either. to do things differently, and I don't think that the law is... Uh, and I don't think Derek's suggesting this, but I don't think the law is the right way to handle this. It's personally none of my business how somebody wants to raise their kids, but if I'm forced to come across someone abusing their kids, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying something about it speaking up and letting yeah, it know definitely. how you feel. Thanks, Aaron. More coming up. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and there's plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts to get on the air and talk about whatever happens to be on your mind. We are discussing uh, discipline versus negotiation, uh, nonviolent parenting. That are Those are some of the topics we've been all over tonight. Though You can bring up anything that you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, there's a Bitcoin conference. Yep, the North American Bitcoin conference coming up July the 19th and 20th. Man, it's, it's just around the corner, about five days from now. It's going to be at Chicago's McCormick Place South Building. And... You can see all kinds of Bitcoin speakers there. Free Talk Live will not be in attendance at this event. We intended to go, but there was some miscommunication with the organizer, and things didn't work out the way that uh, we had thought. So, But you, it's going to be a great event. Nonetheless, I, am, uh, I have no doubt. Uh, you can get your tickets at btcchicago.com. You can pay in Bitcoin if you want. It's btcchicago.com. All right, we're going to go actually all the way to Siberia for our next caller. Justice is on the line, and you are on via Skype. Hello, Justice. Hey there, guys. Hey. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Welcome. Go ahead with your thoughts. All right, I just wanted to talk a little bit, bring up the issue that I've never heard anyone really touch on, and maybe I missed it because I haven't been listening to the whole show tonight, but in the peaceful parenting community, um, where do you draw the line? Uh, between force and violence. Uh, because, for instance, just, just to give it an example, uh, Mark talks about being the only one in the room there who has experience uh, with child rearing. And I have two, two children, a, a four year old and a two year old uh, myself. So um, basically, you know, you have, like, Mark, like Mark has brought up several times, you've got to go somewhere, you're, you're late for an appointment, you got to get the kid in the car, the kid's throwing a fit. You pick the kid physically up, put them in the car. If you were to do that to an adult, and you know that's violence. Um, that's yep. called, you know, basically kidnapping. So where do you draw the line? I mean, uh, is it because you, you know, swat a kid on the rear? Oh, that's suddenly violence, and that's somehow more violence than picking up a kid and putting him in the car. I have a peaceful parenting um, friend of mine who has a, a three-year-old son. We were out walking around with this with this kid, and it was. The whole day long, it was, you know, come over here, get over here, um, just verbal, constant verbal nagging and running after the kid, picking the kid up, uh, bringing the kid back to the, the car, keep making sure. I just tell my girls, you know, hey, girls, get out of the road. Hey, girls, come over here. And because I do use spanking um, in moderation with love, <laughs> they they obey. They do what I say. They do it the first time. Um, and there's there's rarely confrontation. Hey, uh, so to answer your question, Justice, uh, to me, when force is used in a way that a child would have wanted, like if they were older or were in your position, like uh, if you're saving them from going into the road, that is justifiable. But when force is used to punish a child, to make him obey you, that's violence. But see, this is the problem that I have with this position. Now, Derek, I mean, I get where your position is. I've heard it a hundred times. But the fact is, um, Justice, did you were you spanked? Oh yes. Did you do, do you now standing as an adult say that uh, your parents were justified in spanking you? Absolutely. There you go, uh, Derek. See, now, that's a problem for me. There you go. Yeah, now Justice doesn't get an opinion cuz he doesn't agree with Derek. No, well, you're not allowed to believe spanking is okay. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> that is a problem. You're right, Mark. I mean, I I can't agree with you, but Justice. Derek, when you said no, you spank them with no love. Philosophical, there's no a philosophical way for you to draw a line between manhandling a child yep. um, as much as you need to manipulate them physically into doing what you want, and want them to do in any particular time and giving them a swat on the rear. Well, the the, only, I don't do the either. Only difference, well, I understand because you don't have kids. Um, and that's the, that's the deal. You know, 70, what is it? 70 to 80% of people who don't have kids say that spanking is wrong. 
Whereas um, like 90% of people do that How do you do spank with love, Justice? How do you spank with love? I, how do I spank with you love? You said that. That's your words. I say, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I am a, I, I love them in general. Um, all of my actions that I do towards them are, are, are I, I attempt that they are in love. Mm. And so when there, when there is a, when there is a disciplinary issue, um, I'm not angry. Hey, I think I, that, I, uh, I we're, I don't know if it's your it Siberian to connection. I'm going to put you on hold for just a quick moment. Uh, I was kind of uh, breaking up a little bit there, but. I don't think that excuse would really fly in a domestic violence situation. Oh, no, officer, I was only hitting her with love. I only wanted to teach her a lesson. Or, officer, I was only hitting my boyfriend because I love him. I mean, don't you do that with your loved ones? I mean, sorry, I think there's a huge disconnect there if you're using uh, spanking and trying to tell yourself that it's somehow a loving act. Well, you know, there's some differences between these relationships. If I don't like my wife anymore... I can leave. If my if my wife is participating in behavior that I find unacceptable, I can leave. Mm-hmm. I can't kick my child out. I can so, put it up for adoption, I think. Uh, no, nope, you you're it, wrong. Right? You're absolutely no? wrong. Ignorance is showing again. You cannot put your child up for adoption. I'm pretty Simpl- sure you no, can. No, can't you, you like go wrong. drop them off you at uh, drop off You're going to hurt Ian's feelings with all that yelling, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, cool Dave. it. I've, I've <laughs> seen these drop-off centers where you can just drop a kid off. When and you're that's talking it. about a very, very young baby, you can uh, you can do you know you can sort of anonymously drop off at fire stations and things like that in but certain not states. A three-year-old, However, huh? no, there was a, there was a loophole in Kansas law, I believe, a few years back, where parents could actually sort of just get rid of their kids if they want. And parents started getting rid of their kids, oh, yeah. and so they closed the loophole because. They can't have that. No. They can't have parents being able to get rid. So if you want to talk about a biological prisoner, there ain't nobody who's more biologically mm. imprisoned than a parent. So, Justice, uh, are you with us still? Yes. Okay, you're sounding better now. Now, tell me, where since we're talking about drawing lines and you're talking about spanking with love— at what point does physical violence escalate to not being loving? So with the flick in the mouth that the guy was calling about earlier, and I don't know what he means by flick, maybe a, a, a slight tap, maybe an actual flick, I'm not sure. But would a, would a hit, you know, light hit to the mouth, would that be, could that be done in love? Um, I, don't, I don't think so because I think that for, well, I don't, I, it's hard to say in any situation, but for me personally, I need, there needs to be um, – uh, a process so i don't do anything out of spontaneity you don't just go and um, hit your kid you say you, you think know, about this. it first <laughs> um, you say do, do this or else you yeah. know um and if you and if you don't obey then we can go and get the rod and have a talk the rod whoa so wait, no. you're comment? not just talking whoa yeah, tell me not, about the rod hold on you're not just talking about a, a hand to the buttocks you're talking about a rod you're talking about a whipping here well, you well, uh, not a whipping, a spoon or a or a dowel or something to that effect. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that definitely takes it to the. I mean, if even if you could argue that spanking a child me, on the butt well, with uh, with your hand is not abuse, I think it's definitely um, more you know to the next level to use an implement. One of the claims uh, to never, more effectively hit them. Yeah, you never use a, your hand to hit your child. Um, Why not? Your hand should always be a, an instrument an instrument of affection. Oh, I um, see. So as long as there's a weapon in your hand, then it's okay. <laughs> Uh, I have heard this a, before. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm there's curious what you think you're going to do. Just, just, just Sorry, go there's on. one thing here, uh, Derek J, or not Derek J, um, sorry about that. Yeah, it's Derek J, right? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Derek J and Ian are uh, in the anti-spanking yeah, corner here pretty firmly. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. <laughs> so go ahead. The, uh, here, here's, the, here's the deal, though. One thing that I did want to ask you too, the anti-spanking crowd, is why is it that when, when spanking comes up, you automatically go to a... To appealing to authority, like the European Union and the cops and everything. Every other situation, you're like, oh, keep those guys out of the... the oh, the I didn't do that, but we'll let Derek J. Uh, answer your question here in a moment. Hang on, Justice. We'll bring you back, who believes that uh, spanking or beating your child with a rod is somehow a loving act. 855 450 free. I guess that's what happens when you get spanked. You believe that, that you get warped. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Good people need help. 
The homeowners association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you going to display? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Excuse hey, me. hey, hey, hey. Who do you think you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. You want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll free. Bring up anything you want. Right here, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. You get to control the content on the site. You can interact with other Free Talk Live listeners. It's all free. Freetalklive.com. You can get some de- a, de- a pound of delicious coffee. It's available to you right now. All you have to do is go to coffee.freetalklive.com, sign up for the subscription there, and you will get a pound uh, to try out of BuzzBox coffee. It's shade grown, which means that if you've got the uh, the acid reflux thing, or you know, like the, the the stomach acid and just coming up and like eating a hole in your esophagus or giving you a, a esophageal cancer or whatever, and you just can't give up coffee. Try shade grown coffee because it has your your stomach tends to have a, a lot less of a reaction to shade grown coffee. It's also better for songbirds too uh, because it leaves the cover crop. It's the way coffee was meant to be, not uh, the robusto beans that have become so much more popular in store brand coffees. It's also 100% organic, which is 
you know, kind of important in uh, countries where there's no regulation on DDT and other pesticides and leaded gasoline and things like that. It's a uh, top 1% grade Arabica. No arguing with that. There's uh, That's the best of the best coffee. And BuzzBox makes it uh, makes it easy for you to try out their coffee. Just get a pound of it by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. When you do stick with that subscription there that you sign up for at coffee.freetalklive.com, you help people around the world because Free Talk Live is able to give another microloan, a microloan for every 10 people who sign up at coffee.freetalklive.com to get the coffee they normally drink at a price that's really quite competitive. Um, I mean, for high-end coffee, BuzzBox coffee, not really terribly expensive that you'd think that the the cost of supporting uh, these microloans would be prohibitive nothing like that it's it's competitively priced coffee.freetalklive.com we're back with justice he's calling us all the way from siberia what time is it in siberia where you are right now siberia is a large place so i imagine there's more than one time zone there or? yeah i'm in central siberia we're uh, about 12 hours from keen so it's like 9 20 or something so right 9 to, so we're in the morning so wake it up with uh, Ian, Derek and Mark. <laughs> that's right that's right. Uh, you're a morning show. You're a morning show. Over here. Yeah. So you ha- you're trying to hold Derek's uh, feet to the flames here. We've been talking about uh, discipline versus negotiation when it comes to kids, raising them without violence. You are somebody who does use some violence uh, with your kids. You do spank. I, I don't use violence. I use force. Well, that's a, that's a convenient thing to say when uh, you want to not believe you're using violence. But I define spanking <laughs> no, as violence. I ask, I ask you to define the, diff- the line between force and violence, and you can't do it. So what? That's, uh, it's not convenient. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm asking a, for a phil, phil, philosophical definition of the difference between violence right. and force. And I'm he not, asked not you, heard Ian, it yet. He asked you, Ian, to define the difference between picking up a child and moving them, or yeah. let's let's say applying a diaper to a child that does not want their diaper yeah. changed, or a variety of things that I one has to do. I can define the difference between those things. I thought he was asking Derek that earlier. It was a conversation they were having. Um, my answer to that question would be the difference is when you pick up a child to stop them from getting hit by a car, um, you're attempting to stop damage from occurring. When you are uh, hitting a child, when you're spanking them, and I consider spanking to be hitting, you are lashing out in frequently anger, frustration, or whatever. You're not doing anything to try to save the child from anything. You're just punishing them. Well, what about when I have, um, you know, when Jack was smaller and I had to get to an appointment, by the way, taking a six-year-old and trying to shove him into a car seat doesn't work nearly as well as taking a two-year-old. Um, but when I had to go someplace, putting a two-year-old into a car seat, mm-hmm. uh, that's kidnapping, isn't it? Like if I tried to do that to you, if I took you into a vehicle and tied you up into a uh, and immobilized you and took you someplace, that would be kidnapping, right? So, I mean, we're talking about a felony when I do it to you. We're talking about normal parenting procedure well, done every day in America. If you leave the child at home, then we're talking about a felony in Indeed, that particular another case. another one, right? So you've got this situation where you've, I mean, I can't leave a two-year-old at home. I've got to go someplace. No, it's not considered kidnapping when you take your Is own child. Is it violence, somewhere. though? That's what I'm asking. You're dodging the not question. Not in the same way as hitting a child at all, in my opinion. Why? Why? In your opinion, but... Give me a give me a consistent definition. That's the thing, um, and and maybe while you're thinking about, Derek can talk to me about the uh, the issue of of appeal to authority that you guys always do whenever the spanking issue comes up. Sure. Well, in 38 states, uh, children are protected from uh, are protected by law from all corporal punishment. 38 those- states or countries. St- I'm using the word states to okay. describe countries. Yeah, Germany, Spain, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Greece. Sweden, Norway, and Israel are among them. And while that is perhaps an appeal to authority, I can uh, see what you're saying there, Justice, and that did give me pause. It occurs to me that many millions of these populations have been convinced that it is the right thing to do to protect children from being struck by adults, and that they've been so convinced they convince their legislators to create law about it. Now, that's not a perfect solution. That's not the solution that I would want, but it is reality. And if you're saying that you are striking your child uh, with a hand and not an implement... No, an implement. He's using a Right, right, right. With an implement. Excuse me. If you're striking your child with an implement and not a hand and that you've learned that from somewhere, then you're just as guilty as I am to uh, using the appeal to authority fallacy. Yeah, and I, to go back to the the, uh, All right, the 
the answer that you were looking for with forcing a child into a car seat or taking them somewhere against their will. It's, again, to me, one thing to do something against the will of a child, uh, you know, like put them in a car seat or take them somewhere. It's another thing to strike them physically. Not an answer. And uh, what do you mean that's not an answer? One of them's hitting, the other it's one's not. not an answer. <laughs> huh? But one of them is using force, the other one's using force. Yeah, one of there's them's no, you're no hitting definition. a child, the other one is you're moving them in so a direction you want them to go. What if you decide to pinch a child instead of hitting them? Are to you allowed to them? do that? Yeah, can you pinch no. instead? No. What That's about I take a, an ice cold bucket, bucket of water oh, and dump it over their heads every That's time mean. they do so? I'm just asking you. Look, I mean, if I could pick a child up and bind them against their will. Don't do that. What, I, what, what do you call a car seat? Oh, right. I don't know. All right, yeah, Justice. And speaking of which, Derek J. One, one last thing. I mean, uh, I'll call bovine scatology on your on your thirty eight states because mm -hmm. um, because thirty. I mean, many millions of people have decided that you know forced healthcare is a good thing. That centralized healthcare is a good thing. Many millions of people have decided that um, having big armies that go around and blow the crap up. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that think that hitting their kids is a good thing. Thank you for the call, Justice. I appreciate it. It's certainly true that uh, a majority opinion doesn't make something right. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And it may be true that in the United States that Derek J. and myself are in the minority with our opinions about violence. If that's true, I think it's sad. Uh, I think it's a real uh, I think it speaks to the idea that, you know, people in this country have been physically disciplined in very dangerous ways and that that uh, that physical violence uh, reconstructs itself generation after generation. And it leads to people like Justice, who they were beaten as children. So, of course, they think it's completely appropriate to beat their children. Yeah. Now, they put other words and euphemisms on top of it like, oh, well, it's spanking. So it's, it's a flick. It's not uh, beating. It's not violence. Violence, and I'm sorry, you're just telling yourself a story to excuse violence. That's you know, all that's happening. I, I, I think that you're just using the uh, your, your your microphone here as a bully pulpit. Like right? you get rid of him, you, then you um, reset the uh, the situation where calling it uh, violence rather than um, look. The fact is, you've already talked about timeouts and said you're for timeouts. How mm -hmm. do you enforce a timeout? Now this is kind of like the state, right? All it is is a fine. Well, what if the child refuses to go into timeout? Right. Then you pick them up, you put them back into timeout. You're using force again. Yeah, that's why you don't do timeouts at all. Right. And you have, uh, you know, you are going to be shortly held by uh, you know, little minions with knives and torches that are going to set you on fire because the fact is, you have nothing in the area of. Uh, parental discipline right exactly nothing nothing yes nothing. negotiation i will teach them <laughs> negotiation with them. and love well they well they Lots set of you affection. on fire i, I happen it. to like uh the incentive structure personally i like Me that too. one i like incentivizing and disincentivizing but, i don't have a problem with timeout but i get your argument well, you would have to lock the door to keep the kid in the room or whatever why I mean, just I, do timeout without the active listening part i mean i think that's being left out the children need to be listened to yep yeah, sure. no, I totally, I totally agree, but I, don't I still think don't think, I still don't think putting a child in their room against their will rises to the level of physical violence against them, about of striking them, which is what we're talking about here. The toll free number is eight fifty five, four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You can take control. Come up on Free Talk Live. Protection, success, incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. 
And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Free Talk Live. What's the difference between a stoplight and a school bus? Um, a stoplight it is a light, and a school bus is a school bus. Full of children. Oh, and right. so, uh, that's a good the light boy. doesn't have any that's, kids in it. That's, that's what you call a derelict, educated derelict. Yeah, I'm, I, out of Harvard. I'm really not a derelict. I work for a living. You are an educated derelict. <laughs> Well, Barbara, you know what? I, I Have agree with fun, you. Play your game. No, no. no. I, You're a fornicator, you Mark. When Barbara. you pass that next red light, I sure hope they get you good. Now, Barbara, I hope you don't kill anybody. I'm, 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 I'm agreeing oh, with you. Oh, she hung up on you, Mark. But I agree with you, Barbara. I was telling you that I agree with you, except for the stoplight thing. Children, Mark. There's children around at <laughs> every red light. You could possibly hear and kill someone. This, this, by the way, gentlemen. If you would run a red light at three in the morning when there's no traffic, as far as the eye can see, then you you would just as soon run over a school bus and kill right. all the kids inside. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live moments remain here, but enough time for your call if you dial in now. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Don't forget, you can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Get interactive in a variety of different ways. We've got uh, the bulletin board system. It still exists. It's not as popular as it once was, honestly. The Facebook group for the Free Talk Live amplifiers, however, is very pretty big. popular. It's going very, very well. But you do have to join our amplifier program in order to get access to that Facebook group. You can join the AMP program by going to amp.freetalklive.com. Now, AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is you send five bucks a month into Free Talk Live. You get some perks like access to the AMP only call in lines, the AMP only uh, podcast, and more. And we get helped out by that five bucks. It makes a big difference for us because it's money that we can invest into the show to help get us on new radio stations across the country, uh, to help bring new internet listeners on board, to bring new satellites on board uh, worldwide. We've got listeners in Africa now, uh, as well as across North and Central America, that are listening to us on free to air satellite. It costs money to get up on the satellite, so you can help us with all of those things for five bucks a month over at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Back to your calls and thoughts. We've got Chris in Montana. You're on Free Talk Live. Chris. Hi, how's it going? Hey, go ahead. Um, hey, I just wanted to comment on a few of the points. I've only been listening for the last hour, so sorry if somebody's already made these points. But I think there's a huge difference between hitting a child and putting them in the car seat and the difference that hitting them is a, a direct consequence where putting them in a, in a car seat is something that is, is a safety issue. 
Um, and I think in that, that's, I don't know, that's, I, I, I don't think that they're the same thing at all. If you hit a kid and then put him in a car seat, like, are those, they seem like two totally separate things. I don't think they're the same thing, but I'm I think the, the big thing about, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, I'm with you. Go ahead. Well, to me, um, okay, the but, you know putting somebody in a car seat is is violence and it's force in the same way that uh, using um, you know spanking is force. Spanking is often applied in order to get a behavior. Um, in you know the car seat situation, it's being applied because you're not getting a behavior. Yeah, but we don't need to um, treat humans like that. Yeah, well, I think I think the bigger picture of this, and I, I I've worked with children for a really long time. I don't have children of my own, but I've worked with some with mental uh, behavior disorders, and I've, I've worked in preschools for a really long time. I think the thing that gets lost is like uh, spanking is a, a an immediate response. It's almost a quick fix. That's not that's not how, in my opinion, a positive parenting thing should be. It should be a lot of positive reinforcement, catching the children being good, and praising them for that. And then always communicating with them. I think it, one of the silliest things I ever see is when somebody, a kid hits another kid and they get spanked for it. They're getting hit because they hit somebody. And we're trying to teach them, yeah. like, you can't hit. So you hit them to teach them that it's not okay to hit. But then we're, re- we're showing them that the way you get what you want is through violence. And yeah, that, yeah. I think that's very... Well, I think the best argument, uh, the best arguments uh, I've seen against spanking, I don't spank my kid. However, I will um, you know, be happy to talk to people about their bad science and their bad logic when it comes to talking about spanking. I think the best arguments are, is, look, you can't look good if you're caught on video spanking. Every time I've seen a parent applying corporal punishment on video, it looks they trashy. look bad. Yep. Second, um, it's not as effective over the long term as other forms of discipline, including timeouts. Just isn't as effective. It's not as effective, and it has a potential long-term consequences. So, I mean, I'm happy to talk about the reasons that spanking are good. I just don't like the bad rhetoric and bad science behind the anti-spanking movement. Chris, any other thoughts? Um, you know, the, the, I think the thing that that really confuses me is when we say that, like, they're not children aren't smart enough to reason with, and children aren't smart enough to have a rational conversation with. But we think that they're smart enough to connect the violence that we're stri- that we're enforcing on them to the action that we're striking them for. So if a kid does something they're not supposed to, and we hit them, we're assuming that they're smart enough to make that connection. But we say that they're not smart enough for me to verbalize it to them. Well, and I, I don't. don't think I, I don't think I disagree with that. I mean, the fact is that spanking's communication. Spanking is a form of communication. communication. It's a rudimentary and simple form of communication. But I have heard certain people say that, look, you should never spank a child who's over the age of four or six or whatever it is. These are all just arbitrary rules. Just numbers that they come up with in the same way that it's an arbitrary rule on not using a hand. But whatever, it's something that somebody has said. And I think that there's an argument for it. Now, I can't. to me, I can't understand why you would hit a child under two. I don't get it. But. It, right. <laughs> but I've only had one child. I don't know what it's like to have these other people's kids. And if, for instance, I had to communicate to that child, this is a very busy road and you keep coming down here and you won't stop and I'm scared to death. Like if I had to communicate to that to them and every other form of communication hasn't worked, I would be happy to implement that form of communication. I guess I feel like there's always another option, though. I think I think communication is like I, I believe that there should be some kind of consequence. If you keep leaving the yard, Squishing. you have lost your privilege to be in the yard because you. But what about the parents' privilege to be in the yard? I mean, at that point, you're talking once again about the biological prisoner uh, uh, aspect. You know, now as a parent, when I can't go out in the yard, the kid can't go out in the yard. I mean, put him on a leash. Right. <laughs> time. Up. What about leashing? Ew. Is leashing acceptable? Can I put a bit in their mouth and have them uh, pull around a wagon? Well, why wouldn't leashing be acceptable, right? I mean, putting them in a playpen is acceptable at a certain age, right? The idea being that you know where they are, so they can't get out of that particular area, and they're relatively safe in that way. Right. Well, the the sad thing is, is most people that I, I shouldn't say most. A lot of people that have children are not necessarily the people that we want raising children. So it, we're 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 saying things that like a lot of the parents that are aren't even rationalizing, or they're not even thinking about these things. They're just doing them. So a lot of a lot of the parents that I think are spanking aren't doing it because it's a well thought out. Yeah, plan it's a reaction method of parenting. It's, it's a it's reactionary a- thing that they justify by saying I'm teaching, but you're not. Discipline is. 
derived from the you know from disciples to teach. You're supposed to teach, but when you just hit out of anger, that's not. Yeah, it's just a, a it's just and... a violent reaction that people make excuses for, make silly rules up to justify their violence against their loved ones, supposed and, loved and, ones. And I agree with that, and I think there's always another way. I think there's always another way to get across to that kid, and it's the same with when adults get older. You look at somebody that fights another person all the time, and you go, "Wow, that's just barbaric." That guy obviously doesn't know how to hold his emotions or doesn't know how to communicate well enough. If he knew he was a better communicator, he wouldn't have to resort to violence. Or if he was better at controlling his emotions, he wouldn't have to resort to violence. But it's okay if I do it to somebody that I'm way bigger and way stronger and have authority over, and, I, and I'm way smarter than, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense Chris, at all. Chris, thanks for mind. your call and the thoughts. Yep. We're going to another Chris. This one's in Connecticut. Chris, number two, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. This is Chris from Police State, Connecticut. And Ian, you had made a great distinction there as to when uh, the force became violent when applied to your child. I thought that was uh, pretty genius. I don't know if you came Can you up tell me what it is? Because I didn't get it. <laughs> when, it pre- when it prevents damage, the last caller said the same thing. Like, you're going to force your kid into the car when he's three years old because you can't leave him home. Thus, he might burn the house down or hurt himself, you know. But you simply didn't come back with your own answer there when... They were asking you that question, and, you know, they were able to kind of run. So what if I apply a spanking to, in order to prevent damage? How does that work? Uh, exactly? I, told, I just gave the example of a child who goes to – It doesn't just prevent damage. You don't prevent damage by hitting someone. That's crazy talk. Well, well, then apparently tying them up does prevent the damage. Yeah, from a car accident. If he's running towards the highway and you shoved him, all right, I'll, I'll consider that preventing damage. But spanking, like, like you guys have said, is just – breeding more violence in the population. The problem the, the problem that most uh, libertarian types have with it is, in fact, it's behavior modification. It's behavior control. And they don't like behavior control because there's no, a... I don't that's like violence. Not, that's not what it is. It's it's hitting the kid. It, that's the that's the issue. Oh, okay, now it's hitting. But, but yes, binding that's what them, it's always well, been. But, but you know, but you, the, the fact is we use the terminology force in the libertarian movement, and there's a reason, because force is something different than just hitting. You're just saying just hitting, just hitting, just hitting. Picking somebody up is hitting them slowly. I mean, how fast well, is my okay. hand <laughs> How fast is my hand moving in order for it to be discussed? Go ahead, Chris. Let's get some common sense here. The difference between the force being violent or maybe applicable force was that it prevents damage, and I thought that was well worth saying and being used in these future arguments. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate your call I, tonight, man. prevent damage, right? Thank you. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. Now, Marco, quickly with the rest of your story, you had an appointment, a haircut, 9 a.m., your son was being reticent. Well, I think you basically got the um, the story at this point. Uh, this morning at uh, you know 9 a.m., we have a haircut appointment. It's about 8.35. I had uh, warned my son several times, look, we're getting in the car. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to go this morning. So what did I do? I'll tell you what I did. I went ahead and I negotiated. Look, you can watch one of your videos you're not allowed to watch between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. if we go, if you'll just get in the car. Ooh. And that not not good enough, not good enough, hey, you mind you. The no, deal. I'm not going. Okay, <laughs> we'll stop off and get some candy. Now I was going to get some candy anyway, because I think it's fair to uh, get some candy with your, your father to be able to get some candy with their kid, especially when their mother's uh, you know one of these people that feeds nothing but vegetables. Uh, you know, <laughs> but I had to negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. And why should I negotiate for an appointment that I had that he was warned about? Why should I? Hey, you should have just taken the Clippers to his head instead. We'll see you tomorrow night online but- in the meantime time at freetalklive.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? 
At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen with your Liberty Beat for Monday, July 14th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,314, silver opened at $21.04, and Bitcoin is trading at $620. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, creators of the Antminer S1 180-gigahash Bitcoin miner. No pre-order, ships on time, and sometimes it's early. Buy yours today at bitmaintech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. And support comes from Affordable Sound. CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY, and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online at affordablesound.com, or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, a North Dakota pipeline has leaked 1 million gallons of oil drilling salt water into the ground of a Native American reservation over the 4th of July weekend, with some of it spilling into a nearby lake that's used for drinking water. The leak was not immediately noticed, subsequently devastating local vegetation. The briny salt water, which is between 10 and 30 times saltier than the sea, is a byproduct from drilling and could contain petroleum residue from hydraulic fracking, an energy-intensive process that involves injecting water, sand, and chemicals at high-pressure speeds into rock layers. The lake affected by the spill supplies water for three tribes residing in the western part of the state. For the first time in 25 years, Russia has produced more gold than the United States. That's according to a report by the Russian Times. It's now the world's third biggest producer after China and Australia. Last year, Russia increased its gold production by nearly 13%, while China produced a little over 6% more gold than the previous year. Taxation in Russia includes geological exploration expenses, which contribute to the development of gold production. Mobile marijuana businesses are flourishing across Southern California. As more patients prefer that their pot be promptly delivered, rather than having to make a trip to their local dispensary. Nationwide, pot delivery services have nearly tripled in three years, increasing from 877 to over 2,500, according to Weed Maps, a Yelp-like online directory for pot businesses. In part, marijuana deliveries have been fueled by the city's efforts to eliminate dispensaries arguing the shops are considered a curbside eyesore. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Take action and join for free to gain community support and protection. Online at accountableauthority.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, July 14, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Thursday, the co-founder for Ben & Jerry's, Jerry Greenfield, said he wanted to stop Congress from freezing out state efforts to regulate foods with genetically modified ingredients. Originating in Vermont, the ice cream store is in the process of shifting to non-GMO ingredients. Greenfield said food companies should be proud to talk about the ingredients they're using, adding it's simply a matter of transparency and a consumer's right to know. Vermont is the first state to pass a law mandating GMO labeling, an initiative Ben & Jerry's was a leading supporter of. According to a new study published in the Journal of Nature, the class of pesticides linked to colony collapse disorder in the bee populations has now been linked to a drop in bird populations. Dutch researchers found a strong correlation between pesticides measured in surface freshwater and lower population growth rates of 14 species of birds in the Netherlands. The study suggests the bird population may be drinking infected water or feeding their offspring infected insects. 
the pesticides have been connected to declining honeybee populations. Study co-author Rude Fulbin said, although the correlations are very convincing, they are only correlations and cannot yet be deemed the cause of the bird deaths. Experts claim regular eye tests could be the key to detecting Alzheimer's disease in its early stages, way before symptoms occur. Scientific trials show that a key biomarker for the disease can be identified in the retina and lens of the eye. Researchers say early detection could be a game changer, adding that treatments for the disease often fail because by the time a diagnosis is reached, the brain has already suffered too much damage. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, July 14th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Everyone needs to get a justice shed. So you have a place to throw that little juvenile delinquent you caught loitering out on the street corner. This is not rocket science people i just call up my neighbors frank and terry we get out there with baseball bats fishing nets and we knock that suspect out and we toss him in our justice shed we just start dealing out some shovel beatings that's democracy people that's the biggest benefit of the justice shed people you are in charge our justice shed was all filled up so we created this justice cage it's just as good these guys, I think we caught them shoplifting, and this is my daughter's boyfriend. Uh, look, if you don't have a yard big enough to place a justice shed in, go out and get yourself a justice barrel. I don't care. The important thing is to take control of your safety by any means necessary. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, look who's back. Yeah, we're back.